emergency traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Jason Jones. And commuters northbound I-15 continue to wade through the valley of unhappiness. Uh, if you come off the point of the mountain, you're going to hit slow at about, oh, uh, Bangor Highway, I guess we'll call it. And then that's going to last all the way up to 5300 south. And I do mean very slow through that entire stretch. That accident uh, that we had earlier took a major toll on the traffic. Southbound I-15 still running a little slow up in the Ogden area from 31st Street down to Riverdale Road. And also, you're going to be a little bit uh, slow eastbound on the 201 uh, as you approach Bangor Highway. Had an earlier accident there that has cleared. SNS Roofing is your trusted source for quality and affordability. They have been the top roofing company in Utah for over 40 years. Schedule an estimate now. Get a free quote at snsroofinginc.com. I'm Jason Jones in the KSL Traffic Center. Today will be warmer, but the clouds will stick around. Highs will reach the 50s. Right now, let's see where we are. 39 degrees. I'm Amanda Dixon from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We are Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. We're just getting word right now um, on the situation in Baltimore where the bridge uh, collapsed after that cargo ship crashed into it. That divers are now going back into the water. I I had heard earlier that they'd called off the search uh, for they believe all those construction six construction workers who fell from the bridge. Uh, but now um, we're getting reports that they're going back into the water. So we'll keep an update on that. And we learned that uh, Utah trains at depths of up to 125 feet. Mm. This is about 40 to 60 feet that they're searching in Baltimore. It's 9.07. It's time for the launch. Sequence engaged. And here are three things that Debbie wants you to know. Countdown three. We're going to talk about Idaho today. Because uh, the state's trying to do some damage control after Utah women's uh, basketball coach went public with racial hate crimes. She says chased her team from their Coeur d'Alene, Idaho hotel during March Madness that, that happened last week. Well, now Coeur d'Alene officials are falling all over themselves to issue apologies. And they did so uh, during a news conference yesterday. But in a just a weird, uncomfortable twist, the news conference uh, gets disrupted and then gets cut short because a far-right activist shows up and starts shouting questions at officials. This is, this is a press conference? Press, with the media, not with the general public. I'm in the media. Well, who are, who are you with? Who are you with? It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You're out of order. If you don't want to tell which news organization you're with, it's probably because it's a shady news organization. Uh, but, yeah, there's a real problem right now for Idaho. Uh, they're being uh, labeled as racist, and this is a major problem that they have to address because this was a terrible experience for the University of Utah women's basketball team when it should have been the best time of year. Countdown. We're continuing our in-depth housing series uh, this morning at 1035 with this growing trend. Dave, I found it online. Um, there's all kinds of different stories about it. It's helping homeowners pay their expensive mortgages. It's called house hacking. Have you heard of it? Um, it's. I guess the question would be, would you rent a room? Collect a few hundred dollars a month. Would you rent a room to a perfect stranger? to help afford your your pricey mortgage. It is happening all over the Wasatch Front. We started looking into it, and sure enough, lots of rooms being rented out. So we're gonna look into how much homeowners can earn from this, um, and also the downside, besides having a perfect stranger in the bedroom next door to your bedroom. One of my best friends was a stranger. Now this was in college when it's kind of accepted that you just move in with strangers and you make it work. Uh, my daughter had kind of a crazy <laughs> roommate. It happens, it's a little bit luck of the draw, but I think we were totally fine with it in our early 20s and it worked because it worked financially. Why doesn't the same math work now? I think you're gonna show Debbie that it does. Launch countdown one. I could not stop laughing 
when I heard this report come out this morning about Utah, the most affordable state to live in, you know, all of the country? In all of America? What? Yeah, $3.53 a gallon for ga- gas right now. Hundreds of dollars uh, for groceries. We just talked a few days ago about the astronomical price of homes in this state. But yep, USA Today says Utah is actually the most affordable state in all of America. Well, for me, the math ain't mathin'. I love that. The math ain't mathin'. No. It's so true. It feels that way. Whose calculator because, are they using? Well, Debbie, we live in this little bubble, and we never want to leave our bubble, and we want to be angry because everything inside of our bubble is not perfect. Do you not remember paying $7 a gallon for gas in California? Because I do. My son was paying $5 for a gallon of milk in Alaska. That was for the cheap stuff, by the way. Important to look outside of the bubble and you know what? After after all, maybe Utah isn't so bad. Dave and Dijanovic. The launch. Commence. Dave and Dijanovic. Dave and Dijanovic. Special coverage of the top local story. I have a feeling I am not alone, though, Dave. I think a lot of people are laughing at this headline uh, in USA Today that says that Utah is the most affordable. We're number one most affordable states uh, in the nation. To live. I, I just, I cannot imagine what numbers they were using on their calculator back there at USA Today to come up with this because I don't buy it. Yeah, sometimes the math is a little fuzzy in these reports, but they, <laughs> they break it down. They say, okay, let's look at the, the top five basic expenses. Let's look at home ownership, all those costs, insurance, property taxes, all of that stuff, groceries, health care, income tax, and gas. Those were the five things that they looked at, and do 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 your little calculator. Huh. Utah number one. Okay, let's break it down. Home ownership costs—they're out of control. Most first-time home buyers can't afford a first-time home, so they have to rent. Rental costs out of control. What eighteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month? Uh, maybe that includes utilities. Maybe it doesn't. And when it comes to healthcare costs, that depends on what disease you have. What disease you got stuck with? It doesn't, you know, I mean, sometimes it can cost a couple hundred dollars a year to go to the yeah. doctor. And so for some people, it is thousands, thousands. and thousands. Yes. So that yeah. just seems w- just weird to me. And then income tax, okay, maybe state tax is a little bit lower, but it ain't free. In other states, there's no income tax. Uh, and then gasoline, a lot of times you and I sit here and report that we're some of the highest gas prices in the West, and we can't figure out why. Yeah, the, what's so interesting about this, and this is why I think I, I really like this article, is it takes a 30,000-foot view. It really looks from from high above and brings in all the other states and, and measures apples to apples and oranges to oranges. And Okay, well, we might be a little higher in home costs here, but we're far cheaper in health care costs. Or groceries are more affordable here. So you want to know, okay, does it even out? And overall, what does it look like? And Utah comes out on top. It, I will say this, Deb. I, I was as surprised as you are. But as we start diving in and you start looking around, there's one key right here. It's all about what you're paying compared to what you're earning. Mm. And sure, all those things that you mentioned, they can be very expensive. But the fact that we make a good median salary here in in Utah changes the math. We make good money so we can afford to spend more. Who are you kidding? We make good money. <laughs> we make good Come money. Come on. Our listeners are like, ro- they got to be rolling your eyeballs right now, right? I mean, you're making good money? You're going to be surprised Housing? at how much people are making here yeah, in Utah. Well, we've just reported this the other day. It's around sixty thousand dollars a year. You know, so I okay. We'll look and see what USA Today suggests that we're earning here in Utah. But for me, the math still ain't mathing. So we'll get our certified financial planner uh, Shane Stewart on the line next to help walk us through this math. Maybe he can make us bite on this USA Today article. And lean into it, which suggests, which says, Utah's the number one state in the nation.
most affordable state in the nation. There's no way. Dave and Duchenovic. Here's a trick to podcasting at work and getting all the Utah news you love. Download the KSL News Radio app. The podcast for Utah's morning news and Dave and Debbie are right there. Dozens of podcasts a day. That's the app for KSL News Radio. It's a mystery where Old Spice finds its amazing scents like Himalayan sea salt, but I'm thrilled they have because no other body wash exfoliates and moisturizes 24-7 like Old Spice Gentleman's Himalayan sea salt body wash. Now, if only there was a mountain range separating the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateau where I could hide my Old Spice and keep my family from stealing it, my impossibly smooth skin will finally be safe. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? Brakes? We can save you 15% on that. We have OE quality Duralask brake pads and rotors in stock, ready for pickup or delivery. We also have calipers, brake fluid, tools, and anything else you'll need to do the job right. When you get Duralask pads and rotors together, you'll save 15%. It's just part of what makes us America's number one brakes destination. Get in zone, AutoZone. The GOP speaker is getting weaker. Hopefully, somebody will step forward and lead. Does a new vote against Mike Johnson throw the U.S. House in turmoil again? Everyone is unserious about having a serious conversation about the finances in this country. Listen this week as Johnson navigates Republican discontent. Get the latest on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson this week from 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. It's going to be here before you know it. Here comes the summer, like a wave of change. Soda Weight Loss wants to help you look amazing in your swimsuit and shorts. But you got to get started right now at sodaweightloss.com. No time? Try Soda's at-home program with all the support you need online. I didn't realize how unhealthy I was. When you start losing the weight, even that first five pounds, this enormous amount of confidence starts to build in you. You start to realize like, oh, this is possible for me. That's Lauren, and she let go of 35 pounds with Soda. With their help, I let go of 70 pounds in five months. That's because soda works. works. It's why they have more than 8,700 Google reviews and countless before and after pictures and videos of people loving their results. Get started now at sodaweightloss.com. That's S-O-T-A weightloss.com. Sodas, say it with me. Say of the art. Planning for spring at Lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment. And Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Buy one select Ego string trimmer, leaf blower, or mower kit. Get one select 56-volt battery free. That's up to a $299 value. Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 4-3 while supplies last. Selection varies by location. When Cynthia came to TurboTax, she had just launched her new side gig a true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. <clears throat> what did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services. And if you have a drain that's clogged or backed up, after you've tried the plungers and products, the next step usually involves some kind of drain snake or cabling equipment. You see, sometimes the blockage is far enough down the line that you need special equipment that most homeowners just don't have. That's where the drains department at Any Hour Services can help. A drain snake can clear most blockages and get the water flowing again. And clearing block drains is what our drains department does day in and day out. So if you're a homeowner with a drain line that's clogged or backed up and you'd like one of our drain technicians to come and snake the line for you, it's only $29. Yep, you heard that right. Any Hour Services will snake any drain line with normal access for only $29. Sink, showers, tubs, toilets, floor drains, laundry drains, even that sewer main line that connects to the city. We'll snake any line for just $29. For help with your drain issues, call Any Hour Services at 801-443-7700. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. No one helps more homeowners than Any Hour Services. 
I'm so glad that I can carry the KSL News Radio app with me, Dave. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Listen to Tim and Amanda every morning, Utah's Morning News, right on the app on my phone. Listen to David Dujanovic every morning <laughs> on your app, on your phone, uh, or the radio. We don't care. As long as you're listening, we love it. This is different from the KSL app you probably already have on your phone. This is specifically designed for the news radio guys, us. Uh, it's the KSL News Radio app. Plan your special evening out in one of Salt Lake's most unique dining experiences. Five Alls in Foothill. Five courses, five star service, and dining. Fivealls.com. Fivealls.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Tammy Kikuchi. First, the search continues for victims from the bridge collapse in Maryland. One body has reportedly been recovered. Second, prosecutors have officially filed several felony charges against Wasatch County Sheriff's Office employee who was arrested at his home this last week. And third, truckers have a chance to come clean if they have altered their emissions control system and get some money to pay for the repair. Right now, it's 45 degrees in downtown Salt Lake City. Back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Look, this USA Today article had me laughing out loud as I was listening to it this morning. Of course, Utah's Morning News uh, was breaking it down. And once they broke it down, it started to make a little bit of sense to me. But USA Today puts Utah as the most affordable state in the, all of America to live. And I, 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 need to, I need to hear the math for myself, Dave, because this ain't mathing for me. The key is we make a good living in Utah. Which I laugh at. Why do you laugh at that? Because I think there's a lot of people who are struggling. They're living paycheck to paycheck. They can't afford the little extras. They can't even afford a vacation. So when I hear, oh, we make a good living, who? who? This is going to shock you. The number they're reporting. Is eighty nine thousand dollars a year is the median income in Utah? Eighty nine thousand dollars. What's your reaction? No way. It seems high. It seems way high. It's it's certainly at least to me thirty forty thousand dollars a year higher than many people I know. Who are, they're living paycheck to paycheck. So USA Today, I'm sure they. I'm sure they crunched the numbers and they collected the data. But data is different than how we feel, and what is actually happening. So they might look at some data sets, but to me, numbers are numbing. It's it's just how people are actually experiencing their lives. And there's high credit card debt in Utah. We just talked a couple of days ago that the, we're the third highest price housing market in the entire nation between, be, behind Hawaii and California. Then comes Utah. So I'm just having some real heartburn with this. There's a couple of things I think that are important to remember is sometimes, and this matters, it's going to sound kind of wonky and, and mathy, but you say the math doesn't math. The median income means um, they, they throw out the high and low scores, so to speak, and they just look at what it, what is what do most people make kind of in the in the meaty part of the of the curve? Uh, and that's an important number because you're right. There are people that are making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year and, and just scraping by. There's also multimillionaires. We don't want to just average that all together, and sometimes that's mm-hmm. what we do. We take, you know, you're making twenty, you're making thirty, and this guy makes fifty million, and then we average them all together. Uh, the median, so this eighty nine thousand dollars says, Half of Utah makes over 89000 and half of Utah makes under 89000 So, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of people that are nowhere near $90,000 a year, but half are above that. So life is pretty good. Shane Stewart, certified financial planner uh, with DMBA. Um, Shane, Dave just tried to explain it to me, uh, why USA Today named Utah the number one most affordable state in all of the country. I don't buy it. Um, do the math. Do yeah, the math. The, the math. Yeah, the math is, is all subjective, right? It's it's one of those things where we we look at median income right around 90000 which is true. 
But the average income, which is different for in Utah, is just under 50000 That might make you feel a little better, Debbie, that that maybe is a more yeah. real number. And median income just simply means if there were only three people in the state of Utah, Dave, Debbie, and Shane, Shane makes 10000 Debbie makes 75000 and and uh, Dave makes 100000 Well, the median income is seventy five. It's the person in the middle. Ah. So today's point, half, you know, half are making more and half are making less. But the average income is everyone in the state of Utah lumped together and then divided by the number of people. The average income number being around 50000 is much less than 90000 And so today's point is not only half the state is living on less than 89000 they're living on a lot less than 89000 to keep that average down. And so... There's a, there's a big divide there in in average income. And average income has its own problems. If I if you, me, and Debbie were with Elon Musk, our average net worth would be sixty billion dollars. Uh, exactly. Yes. Right? The numbers the numbers are really difficult. And so to that point, Dave, I think it's it's really hard to just look at these numbers and make one definitive suggestion of how things are going. It really depends on even what the individual wants, what the individual defines as making it or not, what, what is their housing situation, kind of car they drive is very difficult to uh, to peg. Shane Stewart, a certified financial planner with DMBA on the line with us live right now. USA Today has named Utah the most affordable place to live in the entire nation. Um, what do you see? What do you think uh, as a certified financial planner? It, I I just don't see it as uh, Utah being the most affordable place. I mean, you look at all of the states across the nation and you look at places in the Midwest where you can buy a home for half the price you can buy it here. I I just don't see it. But but, but what do you see as a certified financial planner? Yeah, many times it doesn't feel that way just because, you know, folks who are scraping by. A lot of folks are, are, you know, scraping by with with, uh, rent or or a mortgage with food, etc., uh, there are some favorable things in Utah, however. Utah's a pretty well-run state as far as, as far as our uh, government goes, meaning they keep the, the tax rates low. Whenever there's high inflation or high unemployment in the country, it's usually a little less, usually a little better in the state of Utah. And so we usually have better employment rates, better, better inflation rates. And, uh, and so there are those things that do favor Utah. There's a lot of numbers that go into this, the, these statistics that they're showing. And so there are some really favorable things from Utah. But, again, to the point that we made about median income, the reason it doesn't feel like everybody is doing because about half the, the entire state are living on less than that median income, and, and yeah. in some cases much less. Another thing uh... – Debbie, you talk about how expensive homes are and trying to get in, especially if it's a first yeah. first home. There are a lot of people that have a mortgage right now. They they didn't buy at the peak of the market, that mm. they have a good interest rate. And I think that certainly plays into our favor right now as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are steps being taken to uh, help with affordable housing and those kind of things. And I hope those programs run well. They're new, they're untested, but uh, they're, they're hopefully there are some things that help this cyclical idea of inflation and affordable housing to come back down to earth and, and make it better for those who are below the median. Shane Stewart, thank you for joining us, Certified Financial Planner with DMBA. So you were saying uh, earlier, Dave, in the show that we're in a bubble and sometimes we like to bash things uh, in the bubble. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Okay, I think because we only know what is immediately around us, we only know what it's like to pay gas prices in Utah. You know, we're not we're not long haul truckers. <laughs> you know, we're not we're not buying gas all across the country. So we know what groceries cost here. We know what gas costs here. We don't have a really good comparison about what it's like to pay a rent in San Francisco which is far more expensive than it is in Salt Lake. So we kind of live in this bubble where we just want to complain and feel bad about ourselves and have a pity party when there are far worse places in this country for health care, for groceries, for gasoline, for home prices. And if you take it all into account, that's what this article is saying, that overall, take it all into account, Utah's doing great. 
do you side with Dave? Is is this just a pity party? Um, 801-575-TALK. 801-575-TALK. Personally, I don't feel like Utah deserves to be number one in all of the nation as the most affordable place to live. I think this article is laughable. Um, so do you side with Dave or do you side with me? 801-575-TALK. Looking forward to your live phone calls next. 9.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Amanda Dixon. Our top story this hour, the University of Utah women's basketball team was the target of racial harassment in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho last week. Local authorities in the city, like Mayor Jim Hammond, says the incident does not represent the city. To the young women who endured racial slurs while visiting, I offer my most sincere apology. Utah's athletic director Mark Harlan thanked the outpouring of support on X. The NCAA removed an official during halftime of the Chattanooga NC State Tournament game Saturday because of a background conflict. The Associated Press reports the NCAA learned the umpire had earned a master's degree from Chattanooga, and officials are not supposed to work the game of their alma maters. A federal judge has sentenced a convicted child molester who hacked the Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium Jumbotron to 220 years in prison. The AP reports Samuel Thompson w- will uh, was convicted on child pornography charges, owning a firearm as a felon, and making the Jumbotron malfunction in three different games during the 2018 NFL season. Your money at this moment, the Dow's up 229 now. That's about six-tenths of a percent. We are at 39,512. Coming up, which should be clear today and a little bit warmer, the rain comes back tomorrow. KSL Weather is next. KSL News Time 932. News doesn't just mean information or dates. It's the story of our local history being told in real time. Be a part of the story. This is Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon. We hope to be a part of your story. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. If you're trying to decide which gutter protection to put on your home, don't just ask how they'll handle leaves. Ask how they'll handle ice. Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and that's right, ice. See, plenty of gutter guards are good at keeping out leaves, but most are made with flimsy materials that can bend, buckle, and break under the weight of too much ice. Kind of a big problem in an icy state like Utah, right? At RGS Exteriors, our exclusive gutter protection systems are built Utah tough. They're made with premium strength materials that hold up to 1,200 pounds of ice per square foot. Simply put, they're not going to budge. Our gutter guards are also certified to handle hurricane-level winds and rain. Mother Nature can't damage them. Guaranteed. Utah Tough Products. That's the RGS way. For a free estimate, call 801-280-3110 or visit rgsexteriors.com. That's rgsexteriors.com or 801-280-3110. Are you stressing about your IRS tax problems? Have you received notices from the IRS threatening to garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, or seize your property? You need an ally. Allies Tax Relief has tax attorneys and enrolled agents that are ready to fight for you. They have saved millions for taxpayers just like you. Allies Tax Relief can help put a stop to IRS collections and most importantly, negotiate your tax debt. Here's Brenda, a happy client of Allies Tax Relief. I owed the IRS around $57,000, and they're about to start garnishing my paychecks. I heard a commercial on the radio about Allies Tax Relief, so I thought I'd give them a call. After a day, they were able to at least stop the garnishments, and after a few months of negotiations, I walked away owing the IRS only $301. If you owe the IRS, call Allies Tax Relief right now for your free consultation. Call 800-230-5174. 800-230-5174. That's 800-230-5174. 5174. You love the feel behind the wheel. Hi, I'm Jody Wilkinson. You'll love the new 2024 Integra from Jody Wilkinson Acura. I'm excited to tell you that Motor Trend Magazine ranks the Integra number one of the best luxury subcompact sedans. Right now, during the Acura Spring into Performance event, Jody Wilkinson has a great selection of fun-to-drive Integras for only 1.9% APR. Or you can lease a new Acura A-Spec Integra for just $349 monthly. Our most popular trim level, you get the Acura Integra A-Spec for only $349 monthly. 
For offer details, text the word Acura to 57500 or come see us at Jody Wilkinson Acura. Jody Wilkinson. Downtown. Acura. 1111 South Main. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And here's Jason Jones. It's looking better now, northbound I-15. You're still going to drop below 70 miles an hour at about 123rd south, and that'll last all the way up to still about 53rd south, but not quite as slow as it was, and things are starting to move along uh, better than they were. So uh, we should see uh, some pretty much uh, decent relief uh, in about another half hour or so. It should be mostly all cleared out at that point. Southbound I-15 in Ogden is uh, so much better now. Uh, no more delays through that construction zone there. Uh, the rest of your highways and side streets are all looking pretty fantastic. We're still seeing, of course, some uh, congestion up in Park City as a bunch of people are headed up to the ski resorts there. Get Mr. Max Performance Missionary Package. Includes one performance suit, four and collar stretch shirts, three ties, one mission belt, one pair of Echo or Johnston & Murphy shoes, just $5.95. I'm Jason Jones in the KSL Traffic Center. Today will be warmer, but the clouds will stick around. Highs will reach the 50s. Right now it's 39 degrees. I'm Amanda Dixon from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. Do you agree with the USA Today report? The article that says Utah is the most affordable place to live in all of America. We're taking your live phone calls. 801-575-TALK. Again, 801-575-TALK. Team Dave says, absolutely. I can see it. Quite honestly, I I don't know. Be, because I love Utah, I'm I'm attached. Love affair, whatever you want to call it. I love Utah. I think it's you know the best state around. It's why I've lived here my entire life. I think they make a pretty compelling case of why Utah is the most affordable. That's not to say things aren't expensive in Utah. I will absolutely grant you that. Homes, gas, groceries, all of that stuff feels very expensive. But comparatively speaking, compared to other states around us, compared to what we actually make, what our uh, incomes are, Overall, I think they make a compelling case that Utah is the most affordable in the nation. I think that you are up in the night. Cuckoo bananas. Yeah. There's just no way. There's just no way that our listeners are listening to you say that and go, yeah, you know what? That Dave is right. I don't feel um, underwater financially at all. This is a great place to live when it comes to my finances. Homes are affordable here, not. Gas prices are super cheap, not. So often we cover stories that gas prices are some of the highest in the West in Utah. You know, cars cost the same here as they do in other states, but sometimes we have to pay more for a car because we need all-wheel or four-wheel drive. We need tires more often because of our, our roads. And then they tell us to buy summer and winter tires. Okay, well, that's just another $1,000 nobody has sitting around. So 801-575-TALK is the number to call. Uh, you can also uh, head over to our KSL News Radio Facebook page. It is lit up with comments of people weighing in. And here's the question. According to USA Today, Utah is the most affordable state to live in. Do you agree with that? Uh, we'll get to some of your comments in just a moment. So for comparison, and this is really where it's crucial, they laid out the national cost of living. So they looked at five different things. They looked at your taxes, home, uh, groceries, health care, and then gasoline. So those are the the five biggies. Nationally, homeowner costs are about $1,800 per month. So does that feel high or, or low here in Utah? Well, if 1800 doesn't even start if you're trying to buy a new home. If you're yeah. a first-time home buyer here, you you never get anything for $1800. So, maybe what USA Today looked at was homeowners who are currently yes in a home and probably bought years ago. Yeah. when homes, the average price of a home wasn't $533,000. Yeah, in fact, just 10 years ago, it was my house was half of that. It was worth probably 250, 270,000. Now it's over 
half a million dollars. Well, I'm not paying a half a million dollars. I bought my house 20 years ago. So I have a, a three and a half percent interest rate. So it's it's going great for me. And there's a lot of people in Utah that are in that situation where they have an existing home mortgage, they have a good interest rate. Not to discount what people are going through right now if you're a first time home buyer, but that's not the majority of Utah. Here's what USA Today says about Utah as being the most affordable state to live in. Our total cost of living every year is about $56,000. The median income, they say, is almost $90,000. Behind Utah, the number two spot is Tennessee. Number three is Arizona. Uh, Then comes Nevada. And then the state of Washington. Have they, have they, did they look at Seattle? Because I've felt for years that homes in Seattle are highly unaffordable and very pricey. Not just recently either. Going back quite, quite a number of years. When I was looking around uh, at moving out of state, it's like Seattle, I can't afford to live there. It's like, felt like San Francisco. Let's get to our comments on our Facebook page. Uh, also, the phone calls as well. 801 talk the number to call. Facebook, we posted this on our KSL News Radio Facebook page. We have uh, more, th- way more than 100 comments. I can't get through all of them. And uh, Kristen says, two days ago, I read uh, news articles that we were the most unaffordable only behind California and Hawaii. Uh, what Kristen's talking about is the coverage that we did here at KSL yeah. News Radio with housing costs. Utah is number three in the nation for most expensive housing. So we're just we're feeling conflicted by the yeah. information that's being put out. Yeah, the key there is what housing is right now. What this article looks like, uh, what we're looking at right now, takes into account you know, the past 30, 40, 50 years, whatever, the people are either homeowners Mm -hmm. or they have a good interest rate. That that one that you're referencing is just the the snapshot into today. Joseph, what do you think? Utah, the most affordable place to live in the nation? No, it's not. Talk about it. Give us more. Not at all. How how so? I've been renting all my, uh, ever since I... uh, I can uh, remember I've been renting, and even the rent's high. It's it's, it's crazy, and uh, not to add upon the uh, the problem, there's the gas gas prices are are starting to be outrageous again. Yeah. And food food prices, and and uh, it's just like you can hardly even get a breather from all that little things added to. But a normal person has to go through, not counting any other additional bills they might have to yeah. pay to 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 uh, make a living. Thank you so much, Joseph. Um, I feel it. I know it. Um, and it's it's difficult because also rent prices keep going up, um, and that's hard to keep up with. Justin, uh, you feel yeah. like Utah's the most affordable place in the nation? It's probably one of the worst affordable, but at the same time, it's probably the most attractive just because there's so much demand. Well, this is what I worry about with this article. After I start, I stopped laughing at the at, at the, this USA Today report. I thought, oh, my goodness, I hope people all over the nation don't read this and start moving here because we well, don't have. the problem is, yeah, if, we, they, if they start looking, they'll notice that those prices are higher, like you were saying. Yeah, those, well, hopefully – because you start looking at uh, the housing situation in Utah, we don't have enough supply here as it is. True. I mean, the governor is already calling on um, home builders to start building, what, 35,000 new starter homes by 2028. So we start getting more people here who look at headlines like this, thinking that they're going to save all kinds of money by moving here. I mean, I guess unless you're living in California, maybe that is the case. But it's not, in my view, affordable here. And this may look much different five or ten years from now. But uh, I look at this, and I I will say this. If the median income is $90,000 a year here in Utah, and that half of Utah is making more than $90,000, that is incredible, right? That probably shocked me more than anything, that half of Utah is making over $90,000. Now, if you're making under 90000 of course, 
all of the all this math doesn't math as you were saying debbie it just you're you're living paycheck to paycheck but uh not that ninety thousand dollars makes you wealthy but it does surprise me that half of utah you know if you're if you're looking through a crowd you could say well half of you are are making over ninety thousand dollars that surprised me a man arrested for terrorizing numerous women all over the Wasatch Front, um, accused of running them down and then leaving the scene. Of course, he's in custody. Uh, he will appear in court uh, today. But KSL Television's Shara Park found something very concerning about the uh, hit-and-run incidents and is asking this question. What took police so long to track down a suspect who've been running over women, allegedly, since August. She joins the show next. Dave and Dejanovic. A lot of us are filling our workdays with podcasts. When you're working, go to kslnewsradio.com. Click on Dave and Debbie's podcast and pick a topic and story length. Podcast with Dave and Debbie. Then get to work with KSL News Radio. As many of you know, I have been on a weight loss program. I've been doing this for the last couple of months with Salt Lake City Fat Loss. The website's super easy, slcfatloss.com. And uh, I have seen some incredible results. I've lost 57 pounds, 57 pounds in 60 days. Now, of course, when you're on a, a program, those things typically cost money, and this one costs money, of course. But how much are you willing to pay to lose 57 pounds? I can tell you. I would have paid just about any number they would have asked if if I would have known that these were the results. And I will tell you, I feel great. It's been fantastic. They did it without surgery, no injections, no point counting, no exercising, no prepackaged meals. At Salt Lake City Fat Loss, uh, they give you the tools, they hold your hand, they walk you through the program, and you will see incredible results. Now, Results vary, of course. I can't promise everybody 57 pounds, but it's been great for me. Go to slcfatloss.com. That's slcfatloss.com to schedule your free consultation. At KSL News Radio, we have a 30 year legacy of honoring Utah teachers, but we can't do it without your help. Please tell us about an important teacher in your life on the KSL Teacher Tribute Wall, presented by Cypress Credit Union. Each month, one lucky teacher wins a $500 gift card from Cypress Credit Union, a $250 gift card to Harmons, plus season tickets to Hale Center Theater. Say thanks to your teacher today at kslnewsradio.com slash teacher from Cypress Credit Union and KSL News Radio. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Orrin Hatch had a front row seat watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Orrin Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Orrin Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Orrin Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us When the weather warms up, it's like a stampede. Except instead of dust stirred up by hundreds of hooves, it's a cascade of phone calls to advanced window products. This is Jeff Kaplan. Soon as the sun shines and the snow's gone, people want new windows and frames from Utah's number one custom window maker, and the wait for installation grows longer. But right now, you can get near the front of the line by calling for a quote and get $2,500 off when you purchase 10 windows or more. That's on top of the incredible savings for the highest quality double-pane windows and frames, any style, any color. See, at Advanced Window Products, they actually build the windows here in Utah. They install the windows, and they guarantee them for life. There's no middleman, and they can pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100. Or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. I love the KSL News Radio app because if I'm running around, I like to have my AirPods in. 
I'm not near a radio. I'm not near my Alexa, which is where I mostly listen to KSL. Uh, I love having it right there in my AirPods every single day on the KSL News Radio app. What's in your garden? Oakdale Organic Compost Nutrient Rich Formula makes vegetables, flowers, trees, and lawns grow beautifully. No wonder it's the official compost of Thanksgiving Point. Visit Oakdale.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Amanda Dixon. First, a portion of 2400 South in South Salt Lake City will be closed for three weeks starting today for a water line replacement. Second, musician Sean Diddy Combs is speaking out about the FBI raids on his two homes this week. His lawyer says the federal agents used an excessive show of force and hostility. Third, investigators think the ship that hit the Baltimore Bridge may have been using contaminated fuel that can lead to generators shutting down. Right now, it's 39 degrees in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave, Dave and Dujanovic. The D2 follow up report. We stay connected to important stories to give you the latest. We're going to talk uh, about this suspect who is going to be in court today. Um, he's been arrested for just allegedly terrorizing women all over the Wasatch Front, um, Salt Lake City and in Sandy, uh, by running them down with the car, according to uh, police and according to the district attorney, Sim Gill. He's a 26-year-old. He's been taken into custody, and he he faces multiple counts of attempted murder, Dave, and some of these accidents left these women in the hospital with brain bleeds and skull fractures. It just was a horrible ordeal, and it's, it's a miracle none of them got killed. What made this really impact me as I started to realize how often I just trust the drivers around me to drive legally, uh, to watch out for me, know where I'm at. The idea of someone just targeting, of course, that I would, I would not be prepared at all. They could hit me at any point because I just assume everyone's going to obey the law. So it doesn't surprise me at all that if someone were out there targeting women that it would be quite easy. Police and the district attorney, D.A. Sim Gill, uh, joined us yesterday saying that uh, he was driving up and down streets and then he would accelerate. Um, it seemed as though he waited in another case for a couple of women to enter a crosswalk and then he accelerated and he hit one of them and she landed in the hospital and, and ended up in ICU. There was this at times uh, stalking behavior of his targets that uh, he waited and saw them and witnesses uh, talked about how he would move to one part. And even as we put out in our Pablo cause statement, the light clearly did not uh, give him the right to go through, but he uh, diverted and accelerated uh, to these women who had every reason to believe in the crosswalk that they were going to be safe. So this all begins in August. And we know this because police have filed charges and they've spelled out, you know, when the first incident happened, the first crash happened um, in August. And then the it goes on and on. A couple happened in February, then a couple more in March. They finally take this suspect into custody in mid-March, and the question now that KSL 5 television's Shara Park has been asking is, what in the world took so long to connect all of these cases, Shara, when it's clear from what we know from police, the same type of car was identified in each one of these cases? What are you learning? Okay, well, first of all, I, I do want to give a... I do want to say that once these all started to really come about in February, where we had multiple within several days and weeks, the dots were connected fairly quickly. It's the case we go back to in August that I have a lot of questions about. I've submitted an open records request to Salt Lake City Police to find out. At that point, that August of last year, they had a woman hit, they had two witnesses at the scene, and they had a license plate, and they identified the driver. And so they had a lot of information. What I want to know at this point, you guys, is, where did, where did that go? Where yeah. was that investigation? Uh, were, were, uh, did police ever request charges be filed in that case? Because then we jump ahead to February where it was my friend and her daughter that were oh, hit. In Sandy. In Sandy. Just, just about 100 yards away from her house. A couple feet from my house. You know what I mean? Like It was that case where um, I found out about 
that hit and run and we did the story and her husband asked me, you know, does anything ever come from these cases? Do they ever track, track down the driver? Because at that point, Sandy PD didn't really have a solid lead other than maybe a fuzzy photo of a white car in the area. But when we look at how many white cars are in the city, right. there's no way to really pinpoint that at that point. And so I told him, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the key here is to get the information out there and warn others. Debbie and Dave, four days later, another woman, two women reach out to us saying, I was hit. Their families reach out, say they were hit, and it sounds so eerily similar to what happened in Sandy. So we do that story, and we contact Sandy PD, and we contact Salt Lake City PD and say, hey, any chance this is the same vehicle, same MO, the, the driver came up behind them, hit them from behind, wow, left Sarah. them in the road, and suddenly, and then a, a week later, another case in Salt Lake City. All the dots started connecting. So a shout out to the police work that happened there in the month of February, headed into March, as they started to connect the dots. But when we go back to that first case, that's where my questions really lie. Uh, okay. And the first case happens uh, not in Sandy. In Salt Lake. It happens in Salt Lake City. August 22nd. So now we have two different police departments yep. who have what seem to be cases that might be connected, might be connected, but two totally different jurisdictions. And what we don't know, it sounds like, is were those two jurisdictions, two different police departments, talking to each other? They were once we started identifying that there were similarities in the cases. So I remember my first call to Sandy PD after the, the Sugar House. The two women were hit there as they were leaving. I think it was a yoga studio or something like that. Um, and so the question was right away, hey, any chance this is connected to your case in Sandy? Okay. Wow. And the response was, oh, we don't know. We haven't heard You're about connecting it. You're connecting the dots. I, I mean, I think a lot of people Initially, were starting to, but, but yeah, sure. It was simply just following those threads. And, and you guys, I just really want to praise the women who spoke up, these families oh, 100%. who spoke up. You know, a, a hit and run, just one off here, one off there. They don't, you know, you don't really start to connect those dots. But these women were paying attention and said, this sounds like what happened to me. And you guys, who knows right now? How many cases are really tied to this? That's what I'm. I'm. I'm very concerned about that. So we look at this gap in this timeline, Shara. The, the first case happening in August, according to police, and then they jump ahead to several cases, a couple of cases in February and March. Well, what happened? We don't know if those are the only cases yet. Well, and we've heard from the DA saying that they're looking at multiple cases. So we have the four right now. Um, and then who knows what could could come about as police continue to go back over some of these hit and run cases, try to identify the vehicles, find out if it was a white Avalon, and uh, start connecting more dots. Part of what where my mind goes had the fact that these women survived. Incredible. Uh, is my friend incredible. suffered a traumatic brain injury. She had a hemorrhage. She um, had vertigo, you guys, for about a week where she was throwing up constantly. She was in ICU for two days. Her daughter, who's 16, was hit. Uh, she hurt her back and her tailbone. Uh, thankfully, they're both okay. But these women, some of these women were critically injured. It's trauma. Trauma. Had these trauma. women died, we would be looking at serial killer behavior. Yes. That's where my mind went. I, I thought the fact that these women, thank goodness they didn't, but the fact that they survived and that they recovered, I wonder if that was handled differently in, in any way because this kind of predatory behavior, it right. truly feels predatory to me in a, in a uh, relatively small footprint, mm -hmm. you know, from Sandy to Salt Lake, that's not a, a very big footprint. Um, I, I think it wouldn't surprise me at all if there weren't numerous more incidents that I came think so. out. We heard even just yesterday, we did a report that there was another woman who said, this sounds very similar. You guys are getting emails. We we got we got a report this morning, a tip, and we reached out to the Salt Lake City Police Department on another, uh, what appears to be a hit and run accident, a crash um, on March 2nd, which yeah. uh, is outside the current timeline that has but been- But what is the timeline at this point? We don't know. We don't even know. Yes. We don't know. You guys, just real quick, I know we have, we're short on time here, but- this isn't this this man is not unknown to police. You guys, we have cases that go back from a theft, uh, a squatting call, a, wow. a a a case where he was charged with punching out a UTA tr train window. The violence here ramped up over years in terms of charges he was so he's not unknown to police. Well, you have to keep us posted. I, I know you're I'm just invested in this. I yeah, want to know. Of course you are. And uh, best wishes to your friend and to all of the the women who have suffered 
trauma and very you know traumatic injuries uh, because of this. He is in court today. We will continue to mm-hmm. follow this. We will. Shara, thank you so much for joining us and bringing us even larger context uh, to this horrible situation that has been going on for months, affecting women all over the Wasatch Front. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. 10 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Andrew Gordon. KSL's top story this hour. Investigators trying to figure out why a 950 foot long cargo ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge will consider everything. That includes if the ship was using contaminated fuel that can lead to generators shutting down. They'll also look at the bridge design, which did not have protective barriers. It is the time to go out and rethink what you have and make sure that all the inspections and all the uh, studies have been made for the individual bridges themselves. Retired bridge engineer Andy Herman says the investigation could take months. The Coast Guard last night called off their search and rescue operation and are now in recovery mode for the six construction workers that are still missing. In other national news, U.S. vendors will save billions of dollars after an antitrust settlement with Visa and MasterCard. The credit card companies will put a cap on swipe fees. Americans paid tens of billions of dollars in these fees last year. Chief Research Officer Ron Shevlin of Cornerstone Advisors says it will make it easier to pay with a credit card. It limits the amount of interchange or swipe fees that Visa and MasterCard can charge uh, merchants and retailers for a, a period of five years. Shevlin says stores may choose to pass those savings on to the customer. A new report from USA Today says Utah is the most affordable state in the nation. Certified financial planner Shane Stewart says this study uses the state's median income instead of the average income. It shows that we have a pretty good large group of people that need better employment. And it also could show we've got some people on the high end that are really high. He says that works much like a teacher grading on a bell curve where extreme highs and extreme lows can skew the results. Your money at this moment, the Dow is up 202 points. Coming up, we've got weather and traffic. KSL is next. KSL News Time, 10.02. You know what's great about KSL's traffic coverage? Trained traffic reporters and real listeners. Trading information and making the commute safer and faster for everyone. Every 10 minutes on the nines, we have you covered. On KSL News Radio. Well, hello, it's me again. And like me, I'll bet you're ready for spring in a little green lawn again. I've got a tip don't spend a fortune hiring a lawn care company. Save some money and do it yourself. And here's how go to J&J Garden Center in Layton and purchase their simple color-coded five-step fertilizer system that covers up to 10,000 square feet and will rejuvenate your lawn for just $199.98. And nobody beats J&J's price. So for a lush, healthy, green lawn, come and try J&J Garden Center's five-step fertilizer system. I promise you won't regret it. Take the Leighton Parkway exit, Main Street to Gentile, then with two miles, you've got to see it to believe it. You really do. Country grown to your home, J&J Garden Center. Utah's strong winds can cause huge damage to your roof that you can't see. Your roof might need repair. Don't wait for a disaster. Call the Masters at Master Roofing for an honest inspection at 801-383-0072. Specializing in small repairs, Master Roofing handles everything from patching holes to full roof replacements. Schedule your free assessment at masterroofingutah.com. Social Security is with you through life's journey from birth to retirement. As your life changes year to year, so do your needs. For over 80 years, Social Security has helped to meet your needs and is committed to improving access to the services that make a difference in your life. Today, you can verify your earnings, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, manage your benefits, and even change your address, all from the comfort of your home. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, 
friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Jason Jones. So they're still trying to tow this triple trailer that is northbound I-15. Oh, and they're moving out right now as we speak. It's been in the Gore area of the on-ramp at 114 south northbound I-15. Slowly they are pulling that thing out of the way. That's left over from that earlier accident that we had at 5300 south. You're going to run a little less than 70 miles an hour still right around the south interchange, but that's really the only delay we've got. The rest of your highways and side streets are looking pretty fantastic. Uh, unless, of course, that you are up in Park City, still trying to make it up to the ski resorts. You're going to run a little slow there. Box Elder County has gone to the birds. Spring migration is here at Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge. See what visitors are chirping about with Box Elder County. For info, activities, and more, visit BoxElderCounty.com. I'm Jason Jones in the KSL Traffic Center. The weather right now, mostly cloudy with temperatures in the 50s and slight rain for the rest of the week. Right now it's 41 degrees and partly cloudy. I'm Andrew Gordon from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. Dave, the state of Idaho, Idaho is uh, on damage control patrol um, after Utah um, University of Utah's women basketball coach went public with with racial hate crimes that she said chased her team from their Coeur d'Alene hotel during March Madness just last week. So Coeur d'Alene officials start running to media microphones uh, during a news conference yesterday. They are tripping all over themselves to apologize to the Utes. But then the news conference itself gets disrupted, gets cut short because some far-right activist shows up and starts shouting questions. Which is exactly the problem with Idaho. This, this is a press conference. It's press with the media, not with the general public. I'm in the media. No, well, who are you with? <laughs> who are you with? It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You're out of order. You're out of order. Now, as you said, Debbie, everybody is falling over themselves to apologize to the youths. Gonzaga, who is the host uh, city, Gonzaga University, they're... 35 miles away they're like we're sorry like this isn't even in your state <laughs> and you're apologizing because everybody is horrified by what happened the governor's apologized public officials have apologized the mayor of Coeur d'Alene was at that news conference he's apologizing um, in, in a moment, we're also going to talk about the FBI involvement and the police involvement now uh, that, thank goodness, uh, the youth women's basketball coach stepped up and talked about it, said what happened. She said it publicly, and now it's a national news story. And so the FBI is paying attention, and so are the police. Um, but, uh, but for just one second, I want to step back to last week with the help of KSL News Radio's Adam Small. And in case you missed it, uh, what happened, fortunately, Adam Small uh, fills fills in those blanks. The Lady Utes were initially assigned a hotel in Quarter Lane, Idaho, about 35 minutes away. KSL.com reports on Thursday the team was headed out for dinner. While they were walking into the restaurant, they say a truck pulled up to them and someone in it shouted the N-word at them. On their way out just hours later, they say two trucks pulled up this time and someone again shouted that slur. Utah head coach Lynn Roberts called it a distraction and upsetting. This should be a joyous time for our program. And to have kind of a black eye on that experience is unfortunate. Gonzaga and the NCAA did help them get a new hotel in Spokane. And that I was really, really grateful for. That when they felt unsafe, they wanted to move, that everybody said, fine, let's just do it. We'll, we'll, we'll change where you're at because if you don't feel safe here, let's move you. Well, But that doesn't address the th fundamental problem because there were other teams – with other black players in these hotels. Well, and Idaho has had a racism problem for decades, especially northern Idaho. So the idea that whoever decided that they were going to put teams in a Coeur d'Alene hotel 
northern Idaho is infamous for problems like this. Now they apparently ran out of rooms or maybe maybe there's more to the story. We'll figure that out in the Spokane area. But they're, they, they, they put them 35 miles away from the actual event. Now, Coeur d'Alene itself is a beautiful part of the country. I don't know how beautiful it is in March. It's a beautiful part of the country in June and July. But there, Idaho is known, northern Idaho specifically, is known for white supremacy. It is known for Aryan nation ties. And we'll get more into that in just a moment with a retired FBI agent who specifically worked cases regarding these issues in Idaho and in that part of the country. He'll tell us like it is. But the question right now is, was the law broken? Well, before that news conference in Coeur d'Alene got interrupted, the chief uh, of police said, yeah, there's some possible violations here. And he's he's been involved or gotten the FBI involved, too. There's an Idaho statute regarding malicious harassment. Uh, the second one, second one is a, a disorderly conduct statute. And then thirdly, there is a federal crime based on what actually occurred that evening that might be appropriate. So what kind of resources are, are going into this? Nothing unless Coach Roberts brings this up yeah. at the press conference. And yeah. that's why I think it was so crucial that she called it out. Because it could have been one of those things. And I think many of us have done something similar where something happens and we just dismiss it. We move on. We don't want to address it. But she took the time, the effort. She knew that this was going to be uh, a big deal. And by bringing it up in a national press conference, now it is being addressed. She's doing what coaches do best, and that's protect their team. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's exactly what it – couldn't do anything about it in the moment, maybe. Right. Uh, But – uh, did something about it after the fact, and now it's 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 getting national uh, attention, and it's getting the attention of the police department and also the FBI. Uh, the police did uh, chief did say there were a hundred people in the vicinity at the time, so they're looking for witnesses or looking for surveillance video. We don't know who did this. They haven't caught anybody yet, at least not that we're aware of. Uh, but they're looking, they're trying to figure it out. And in the meantime, Idaho officials are, like I said, tripping all over themselves to do damage control because they know they have a problem on their hands. They have a, an image of, of racism, and they have a history of, of racist incidents in that area. So a couple of officials start bellying up to the podium yesterday to start issuing apologies to the University of Utah. To the young women who endured racial slurs while visiting... I offer my most sincere apology. And it's about 17, 18 minutes into this news conference, from what I could tell. And in true northern Idaho fashion, somebody who's been labeled a far-right activist by the, by the media in Idaho starts shouting questions and interrupting the news conference. And it ends up shutting down the news conference. This, this is a press conference? It's press with the media, not with the general public. I'm in the media. No, well, who are you with? <laughs> Who are you with? It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You're out of order. So what is standard uh, for folks that may not know this is uh, when you're at a press conference, uh, if someone asks you who you're with, you just, I'm with KSL. I've answered yeah, this question a thousand it. times. We, if, a lot if of times we are, wear press badges. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So the, it's very normal. That's a normal question. Hey, who are you with? Sometimes there's press passes that are, are required to attend a press conference. Sometimes they're just open. Uh, I, I don't know what this situation was, but it, it is definitely fishy well, when you're asked who you're with and they say, don't worry about it. So I started looking into who this was and a few media organizations uh, reported a name. And I, so I went and thought, oh, I'm going to look up who this is. And they have a quarterly newspaper up there has done a, a full article on who this individual is in the past. They've done articles on him, and um, yeah, he seems he seems like he's um, somebody who would show up to a news conference uh, where local officials are trying to issue an apology about uh, you know a racial incidents happening um, to the University of Utah women's basketball team and start trying to disrupt the news conference. So, I mean, they've associated with him. He said he was a guy who got suspended 
um, for uh, from his radio job back in uh, back east mm. for posting a white supremacist video online that caused backlash against the the radio station. So this is this is what we're dealing with in northern Idaho and what the FBI has been dealing with for decades. Now, it's no secret I was a spokesperson for the FBI for a number of years, and Idaho was part of our territory. And northern Idaho was like, oh, not again. Please tell me that this is not happening again. Because the history of racism, the history of white supremacy in this part of the nation has been going on long before the women's basketball team from the University of Utah showed up to play in what should have been the best game of the year. March Madness. What could be better? But then this happens. We're going to get a former FBI agent who I worked with when I was at the FBI who worked this area, who knows what goes on there very, very well. He'll tell us the history of Idaho next. Dave and Dujanovic. You know KSL is the only news radio for your car, right? The only news radio for your smart speaker. Come here in the morning. It's the latest news and traffic. In the afternoon, news and updated weather. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Looking for a secure retirement plan without market risk? Look no further. Lyle Boss, president of Boss Financial, specializes in no market risk retirement strategies with guarantees of principal, guaranteed growth, and lifelong income. Join Lyle right here each Saturday and Sunday for his Safe Money radio show and call him now at 855-355-SAFE for your complimentary customized Safe Money information kit and Safe Money book. Nothing but upside here at 855-355-SAFE. The GOP speaker is getting weaker. Hopefully, somebody will step forward and lead. Does a new vote against Mike Johnson throw the U.S. House in turmoil again? Everyone is unserious about having a serious conversation about the finances in this country. Listen this week as Johnson navigates Republican discontent. Get the latest on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson this week from 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. Real Salt Lake's 2024 campaign is officially underway. And if you haven't felt the pulse of the riot at America First Field, you're missing out. For the win, Diego Luna. Yeah! yeah. He'll have a go! Yeah. RSL is back. Rally behind Chicho, Diego Luna, and the squad as they embark on a journey to bring the cup back home to Utah. Chicho! Chicho has it in! Real Salt Lake. Get in on the action. Secure your tickets today. Visit RSL.com or call 844-REAL-TIX. For the right repair and the right paint, the right choice is manufacturer-certified Martins Collision Repair. Hi, I'm Tiago Martins, and few have met the rigorous certification by Kia, Dodge, Infiniti, Chrysler, Jeep, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others. But it's one more reason that Martins is your right choice. Check online at martinscollision.com. On State Street in Orem and in Salem, we work with all insurance companies. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martins Collision Repair. For the right repair and the right paint, the right choice is manufacturer-certified Martins Collision Repair. Hi, I'm Tiago Martins. Many shops have ASC and ICAR certified technicians, but few have certifications by General Motors, Nissan, Chrysler, Hyundai, Jeep, and many others, making Martins your right choice. Online at martinscollision.com, on State Street in Orem, and in Salem, we work with all insurance companies. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martins Collision Repair. At JCW's, we think tipping might be getting a little out of hand. Like when you're asked to tip at the register before you've even been served. Or when you're at the yogurt shop and find yourself serving yourself. And don't even get us started on frosted tips making a comeback. That's why at JCW's, when you pay for a third pound ranch bacon cheeseburger, that's what you pay. And no one at the register is going to stare longingly at you while you awkwardly maneuver through the tip screen for food you don't even have yet. Honestly, we're just happy to see you at any of our five locations in Provo, South Jordan, Lehigh, Harriman, and American Fork. So come on in and enjoy some quality time and great food with family and friends. And we promise we won't be pushing you for a tip. 
Hey, this is Chris with JCW's, and we just want to say thank you, and especially to our loyal customers. We want you to know that at JCW's, your business is all the tip we need. JCW's, quality and a lot of it. Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and I'm proud to tell you, we don't lay off employees when things get tough. During the pandemic, we didn't let one of our installers go. Instead, we had them clean and remodel our offices so they could still get paid. Remember the 2008 housing crisis? It was a financial nightmare for even the biggest contractors. Still, we didn't lay off a single worker. Nope, we sacrificed profits to keep paying everyone. Look, when the economy's down, most contractors are quick to lay off their workers. It's the easiest way to save money when times get tight. But at RGS Exteriors, we're loyal to our people. You know why? Because it's the right thing to do. People first, people always. That's the RGS way. For gutter siding, windows, and more, call RGS Exteriors at 801-280-3110 or visit rgsexteriors.com. That's rgsexteriors.com, 801-280-3110. I love my KSL News Radio app. The best part is I can listen to Tim and Amanda in the morning uh, on this on the live stream on the app, um, and I can get all of my day's news right on the app. It's totally free. Download it today. Again, that's the KSL News Radio app. Get it on your smartphone now. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Andrew Gordon. First, a portion of 2400 South and South Salt Lake City will be closed for three weeks starting today. Drivers and residents will need to find alternative routes. Second, the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has left tangled metal and debris in the water, creating a dangerous environment for rescue divers. Third, a new report from USA Today says Utah is the most affordable state in the country. Right now it's 44 degrees and mostly cloudy in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Eugenovic on KSL News Radio. Dave and Eugenovic. Decades before University of Utah's women basketball uh, team showed up uh, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, the Aryan Nation uh, settled there. The founder of the Aryan Nation settling in northern Idaho, and northern Idaho has been a bed of white supremacist um, rhetoric, threats, and I am so glad that the women's basketball coach from the University of Utah spoke out about what happened to her team um, as they were walking back or walking to dinner uh, last week during the March Madness tournament because they were put in a hotel in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, 35 miles from where they were playing. You know, and you, you have people say, man, I can't believe that happened. But, you know, racism is real and it happens. And it's, uh, it's awful. Now, Spokane, Washington, which is the home of Gonzaga University, uh, that's where John Stockton played. So that's uh, largely where we know Gonzaga from has a very rich history in basketball, both men's and women's. So it's not totally uncommon for teams to stay in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It's only 30 minutes away, 35 minutes away from Spokane, Washington. Spokane's you know fairly small. Uh, so if you have a, a tournament, you're hosting a lot of teams, it's not totally weird uh, to stay in a, you know, a somewhat adjacent mm. place. The fact that it's in a different state is kind of funny. But, yeah, Spokane's right on the, the border. But when you look at Coeur d'Alene's history, as you were saying, Debbie, yeah. this goes back to the 70s, this kind of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. I mean, and you look at it's not only, you know, Coeur d'Alene is 35 miles uh, by freeway, uh, by highway to get to Spokane. Um, and Spokane has had its share of problems, too. Um, bomb blasts, a bomb planted on a parade route uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, well, 10 years, 12 years ago now, 2011, during the Martin Luther King uh, parade. Uh, both cities share uh, an infamous history of white supremacy and problems. But Northern Idaho 
uh, Greg Rogers, retired FBI agent. Uh, when I was a spokesperson, uh, you were working a lot of cases up up in Idaho for the FBI, and I was a spokesperson at the time. And I would just, I would honestly want to pull my hair out because this area of the country and of our area itself, of our jurisdiction, was such a problem with white supremacy, with racism, uh, with with people that just espoused these very faulty and disgusting beliefs. Yeah, I spent a lot of time uh, in in Coeur d'Alene, and um, unfortunately, there are still a, uh, a number of very active militia groups. The Aryan Nations there, thankfully, is uh, Richard Butler, who founded it, died in the uh, early 2000s. And um, the Southern Poverty Law Center was successful in a very, you know, good lawsuit and um, seized all their property and sold it to satisfy a judgment. So they're gone. But, you know, the remnant of um, uh, of the Aryan nations and militia groups are still very active in that area. Greg, when you talk about the militia groups, could you paint a picture? Are we talking about uh, large groups? What do they do? Uh, What? How do they live? They, um, they, they, they essentially train in these paramilitary groups. Some of them are, you know, they're not very large. Most of them have uh, the groups that I infiltrated had, you know, 10 members, 15 members. Uh, there would be conferences where hundreds of them would show up uh, from Idaho, Montana, Utah, and, um, you know, bring all of their members. But, uh, you know, most of them have jobs. They have um, uh, a lot of them were, uh, quite frankly, a lot of them were truck drivers. But they have, um, you know, they have jobs outside of their militia because the militias don't generate any income. But they are, um, you know, they're just anti-government groups that are uh, also largely white supremacists and, um, um they're still very, unfortunately, very prevalent in that area. Uh, To be brutally honest, though, Coeur d'Alene kind of gets a bad rap. It's not, Coeur d'Alene is um, sort of like Park City is to Utah. Coeur d'Alene is a very liberal city uh, for Idaho. Uh, It's very high-end resort community, very expensive. The, The militia guys, uh, and, and, and the Aryan Nations guys, when they were still prevalent up there, couldn't afford to live in Coeur d'Alene. So they lived outside of Coeur d'Alene in cities like Hayden Lake yeah. and Rastrum. But they do come into Coeur d'Alene all the time because that's where, quite frankly, that's where Home Depot, Walmart, that's where all, you know, they, they come into town for those things right. and to uh, – go to downtown Coeur d'Alene, which is where the basketball team was. The team was in a really nice um, hotel that's called the resort right on the lake. It's actually beautiful. Yeah. And you can walk you can walk right from the resort uh, to downtown, which is what they were doing. And so, unfortunately, some of these um, knuckleheads were down there and saw them. So, Greg, just in the next two minutes that we have, um, describe for us when you were an agent working cases up there uh, with the FBI. Uh, what kind of rhetoric would you hear from from these individuals, or what what are they known for? They're they're um, fundamentalist. Um, the Aryan Nations groups and and the remnants of those were Christian fundamentalists that were very. Um, Racist. I mean, if you weren't, uh, you know, it was white supremacy to an extreme. Um, they wanted to establish, and still, still did talk about establishing a white homeland, uh, which would include several states. They wanted to run out, not just, you know, when when white supremacy it, it, to to the Aryan nations and their progeny wasn't just against. Um, it was against any minorities, uh, any and all minorities. So if, if you weren't white, they wanted to run you out of their homeland, which they had hoped was going to include Montana, uh, most of the Pacific Northwest. So it was, um, you know, it was nonsensical. These people are, quite frankly, not deep intellects. And um, 
And that's what happened. So when, when some of them were driving around in downtown Coeur d'Alene, and they, which is a really small area, um, and they saw the basketball team, they just, they just couldn't resist spouting their racist nonsense because that's what they do. Greg Rogers, thank you for joining us. Retired FBI agent, worked cases in Idaho. Uh, it sounds like you know Coeur d'Alene very well. So thank you, Greg, for your expertise. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Always good to talk to you. Uh, appreciate your perspective. And I know you worked uh, those cases um, <laughs> for many, many years. So very familiar with that area. The FBI said to be involved, according to the Coeur d'Alene uh, chief of police. He said he's also investigating. Uh, but they're, they're looking for witnesses. They're looking for witnesses. They said they're looking for surveillance uh, to corroborate uh, the allegations that have been made. Um, and uh, they're on the case. What, whether something comes of the case or not will, will, will remains to be seen. But, again, I'm glad that the basketball uh, coach spoke out about this. It should never have happened. It's unfortunate. Dave, I think I think you said it best. This should have been the best time of the year for uh, Utah's women's basketball. Yeah, at the, the best, it was a distraction. At the worst, they, they feared for their safety. They moved hotels. They moved. They had to move hotels. Next, um, we're going to talk about a growing hack Uh, I think this could help homeowners afford a bigger mortgage payment. Uh, Would you have a perfect stranger live in your home? Not only live in your home, but uh, sleep in the room next to yours just to make a few hundred extra bucks a month. We hope you have the right app on your phone for news. You probably have dozens. But the KSL News Radio app, well, it makes our live stream super easy. Plus, our talk shows are right there as podcast for your workday. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Rick at loansbyrick.com has some important information for anyone in Utah and Idaho who's thinking of buying a house. Do it now. Don't wait until summer because home prices in those two states will likely increase by 10 to 20 percent due to in-migration from California and other states. That means a house that costs 400,000 right now will go up by 40 to 80 grand with multiple offers. Interest rates may drop later in the year, possibly to the 6 percent range, but the increased cost of the home will mean that your monthly payments will go up by a lot. So start looking and buy now. Refinance when the interest rates go down. Waiting to buy your home will only hurt you in the long run. For more details and buying strategies, call Rick at loansbyrick.com right now. 801-809-SAVE. Rick can evaluate your situation and get you on the path to buying a home today. 801-809-SAVE or click loansbyrick.com. Rick Kirschbaum, NMLS 241179 and Vintage Lending, NMLS 287106 are equal housing lenders. Some restrictions apply. 1032 at KSL News Radio. I'm Andrew Gordon. KSL's top stories this hour. A British court is delaying WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition to the U.S. Assange is facing charges for acquiring and publishing classified documents online. A U.K. court ruling that Julian Assange's extradition can go ahead if the U.S. is able to provide sufficient assurances that his case will be considered under the full protections of the First Amendment and that he will not be subjected to the death penalty. The court noted that U.S. prosecutors have also said the First Amendment may not apply to Assange as a non-American citizen. The court said in that case, extradition may not be permitted. In Ezra Guterri, ABC News, at the Foreign Desk. April 8th will bring the final total solar eclipse visible in the United States until 2044. This has up to a million sun gazers expected to flow into Texas for the galactic event, and school administrators have some tough choices to make. The potential traffic jams have some school districts canceling classes on April 8th, but at JFK Elementary School in La Jolla on the Rio Grande. We want to make it a memorable learning experience for our students. Principal Laura Cantu says classes on that day will be all about the sun and the moon. Our vocabulary models discuss dealing with a solar eclipse. Then some outside time. We are providing safety viewing glasses for all of our students. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Dallas. Your money at this moment, the Dow is up 234 points. Coming up, traffic and weather is next. KSL News Time, 1033. A lot can happen between falling in love with a house online and owning it, between imagining living there and breathing in your new home for the first time. 
Having an advocate who can help you navigate the complex world of financing, inspections, negotiating, analyzing the market, and talking through any anxieties that may pop up, that can make all the difference. That's what the expertise of a Realtor can do for you. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors and bound by a code of ethics, because that's who we are. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. In the history of the world, nobody has ever said, yay, we need a new roof. But when things aren't quite right up there, don't wait. Call IWC Roofing, the highest rated roofing contractor in Utah. IWC has been in business since 1997, and they offer the best value pricing in Utah, along with the best warranty in the business. They're one of the few Owens Corning Platinum Certified Roofers in the entire state. They have their own installers, no subcontractors crawling around on your roof. And at IWC Roofing, they'll send you pictures from up on the roof to show that you're getting exactly what you paid for in most most cases, they'll re-roof your home in one day. They'll clean up and pressure wash your driveway. IWC roofs more homes than any other company in Utah, so they can offer you a better price. And right now, an extra fifteen hundred off your new roof. Call IWC Roofing for a no pressure quote. 801-232-5690. Call 801-232-5690, or go to iwcroofingutah.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Jason Jones. We had a problem southbound I-15. There were some construction vehicles that were rolling through the uh, Clearfield area, and they caused them some slow traffic. They had to slow things down. Not exactly sure what kind of road work they were doing, but they have fixed that, and they are off to the side of the road now. And uh, traffic is still running a little bit slow from Roy down through Clearfield, but it's uh, getting better over and should be uh, cleared out here in the next uh, little bit. Northbound I-15 in the Salt Lake Valley is much better now. No problems at all as you make your way out of Utah County into downtown Salt Lake city now the rest of your highways and side streets are looking pretty good in fact uh, no trouble right now if you're headed up to the ski resorts in park city either which is uh, really kind of nice because it's been a trouble all morning long i'm jason jones from the ksl traffic center your weather forecast looks to be mostly cloudy with chances of rain for the uh, rest of the week right now it's 44 degrees and mostly cloudy i'm andrew gordon from the ksl common spirit health studios listen online at kslnewsradio.com we are Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. Priced out, housing, special coverage with Dave and Dejanovic. Let's talk about a growing trend. It is called house hacking. And as always, we love the fact that the Stern team uh, has teamed up with the David Dijanovic show over the next year to bring you housing coverage. I mean, housing is such an important uh, issue. It is a huge part of our economy and out of our lives. So if, if we can find a hack to make your mortgage more affordable, you bet we're going to talk about it. I love this story so much. I love hacks in general, life hacks. I'm all for them. But this is one, I'm surprised more people don't take advantage of this. Have you? Do you know what it is? Let me tell you what it is. Uh, you rent a room. You went rent one room in your house. And Zillow reports, uh, according to uh, these, these housing trends, uh, this is last year's information. Of course, data is always a little bit behind. But more than half of millennials, 59%, um, and 54% of uh, Gen Z buyers say it's highly important to be able to rent out uh, their entire home in the future. Um, but in the meantime, even renting a room, even renting a room to make a little extra money is the direction that more homeowners are going for. Would you? I love this. Yes, I would. First of all, absolutely I would. Number one, we've all done it. We've all gone to college. 
We were paired with somebody we've never met before. Mm-hmm. We either hated them, we loved them, we were indifferent toward them. But the reason we did it is because we couldn't afford to live on our own. So we live in a dumpy old apartment complex or the dorms. We do it because that's what we can afford. Some of these dorms, it was like, here's a dorm and here's four beds in one room with a small little table. Like It was medieval. It was it was just terrible living, but we did it because that's what you can afford. As you get older, according to Zillow, this becomes less attractive of an option. Of course. So boomers, um, fifty nine years of age and older. By the way, I'm not quite there. <laughs> I'm close, but I'm not quite there. Only four percent are interested in that as a source of of a little extra income. And in a moment, I'm going to tell you how much you can earn. We've done some price shopping on renting a room uh, in Salt Lake County and in Utah County um, up to Ogden. So we've kind of covered lots of areas of the Wasatch Front just to get a good idea of how much it would cost or how much you would earn if you just rented one room. So that in just a moment. Boomers, 4% are interested in it or have done it. Uh, Gen Xers, 44 to 58-year-olds. This is your age group, Dave. 36%. Um, so and, more and than that, a third. That's, that's actually my age group too. I'm. I'm. You're only a Gen 57. Xer. I'm only 57. Um, I feel older than that sometimes, though. But that's okay. We'll talk about that in Old another soul. episode of David Janovic. Millennials, 55 percent, want the opportunity to rent out a room. Um, and then Gen Zers and um, are at about 51 percent. So millennials and Gen Zers really do lean into it. If I had my preference, of course, I would live all alone just by myself. Why? Right? I, you don't want the income? Yeah, I, no, no, no. If I if money weren't the option, I, see. Okay. I, I would love to. Like That would certainly be my preference. But if it's the difference between me owning a home and renting, uh, absolutely, I make this decision. So this is something you could talk to your kids about. Oh. Wh- your 20-something-year-old I, kids, they're, they're not in their own home yet. No. Uh, they have two bedrooms in, in their room. in their apartment right now. They totally could. So they could sublease. They could sublet it, yeah. Absolutely they could. Yeah, they could do it. And if you can make, you know, several hundred dollars. So let's just pick a number out of the air. $500. That's the equivalent of working 25 hours at a $20 oh, an hour job. I hadn't thought of it that way. So that's an important okay. part of it for me. If I if I look at it and I say, okay, I'm about $500 a month short of being able to afford this. Do I want to go out and get a part-time job where I'm mm. working 25 hours a month? That's a great point. Now for somebody- Which is the sacrifice you'd rather yeah, have? I, I look at it more like this. If I were going to do this and earn $500 a month, now- I would claim it on my taxes. I wouldn't mess around with trying to get money under the table because mm-hmm. the IRS it's will income. catch yeah. you. It's income. But let's say you charge five or six hundred dollars a month, and you take twenty percent of that, twenty five, whatever, thirty percent for taxes. Uh, so you're you're netting maybe four hundred dollars a month. Uh, yeah. That to me would be for my single life, my awesome mm-hmm. single life, um, would be groceries and gas money for the month. Yeah. Think well, that, about that. That'd that be makes my, it real. That would, that would cover my grocery tab and my gas, my filling up my tank. Because I pay about $75 yeah. a month right now to fill up my tank because I've got that hybrid that's just phenomenal on gas mileage. And, um, you know, it's it's lunch and dinner for one. Yeah. So it, there I've got, right there. You know, I've got. You're I've making got that the covered. math work, Deb. I'm math in the math. You're math in the math, and it's working. So let me let me tell you how much you can earn, uh, according to what our producers, our D two research department, went to work looking at the cost of or the 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 money that's being collected by landlords who rent out one room in their house. You're still living in the house, so you basically have a roommate now. Yes. Uh, Salt Lake County. We found one in Mill Creek for six hundred and seventy bucks a month. Plus, you put another $50 a month on this property toward utilities. Um, let's go down to the Orem area. A private room um, goes for about $550 a month. You share a bathroom and utilities, girls only. 
only females allowed. So that might be a, a, a home that's being shared by college students. But we looked a little deeper and we found that most in Utah County are going in the Orem area going between five and, and six hundred dollars a month. Uh, how about Kearns? Six hundred a month. Pleasant Grove, six hundred and fifty a month down in Utah County. So you got Salt Lake County and Utah County. So you're right in the let's say five to six hundred and fifty dollars a month. Ogden, you're right about the same for one room. Do you want me to rock your world? This is, we're out of time. Okay. What? Are we going to continue this? Yes. Okay. Okay. I've got. Well, you the... can't just say that and be like, okay. <laughs> Show's <laughs> over. We're going home. I'm gonna this rock is so good. World. Okay. Let me. Why don't you rock my world in three minutes? Okay. In three minutes, I'm going to tell you if you take that $500 and you apply it to the principal, the principal of your home mortgage. Oh, this is going to get good. What that does, how many years, plural years, you can shave off. Okay, I love it, Dave. And let's also take your phone calls live, 801-575-TALK. Would you rent a room to a perfect stranger? You're going to do this by by April. You're going to have a roomie. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, to bring in more income. Why not? 801-575-TALK, 801-575-TALK. If you don't like the idea, oh, we'd love to hear from you on that, too. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Debbie go out of their way to make sure you hear all sides of a story. They're working the phones to get several viewpoints on for you. Hi, it's Tim and Amanda. We get you the full story, too. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. With interest rates coming back down, I bet the real estate market will pick back up in 2024. We're already seeing that, Tim. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter how the market is doing when you have the right team. So if you're looking to sell your house, now you want to downsize or you need more space, you need the Stern team. The Stern team has taught us, you know, I can think of a handful of things that I would worry about if I was buying or selling, but there are a hundred details Uh, that are involved in selling a home. And they have lots of people that are handling every detail so nothing falls through the cracks. And they have so many different options. I mean, I worked with Cami there at the Stern team, and she was awesome. But if you need an instant cash offer, you can do that. If you need to buy before you sell, you can do that. They have flexible fees. They also have uh, people that they represent that are looking to buy a home. So maybe they can make that perfect connection within the Stern team. So don't put off selling your house or buying a house because you think the market isn't just right. The market is right with the Stern team. Go online to sternteam.com or just Google the Stern team. Three days only. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Save thousands on hot tubs and swim spas. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Utah State Fair Park. Hot tubs discounted 40 to 80% to the lowest possible price. Starting at $29.99. Free professional delivery. Take possession tomorrow, next week, next month, or next season. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Utah State Fair Park. Shop over a dozen models of swim spas from 11 feet to over 19 feet. Swim spas offer low impact exercise, active family fun, unsurpassed relaxation, and installation in one day. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Everything must go. Free parking, free admission. You can't afford to miss this. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in stock spas. Friday, noon to 8 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Utah State Fair Park. Visit hottubandswimspasale.com. This is what you've been waiting for. Well, I mean, I know some of you have. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and we don't usually experience a slow season, but when we do, it's this time of year when the weather's transitioning from winter to summer. You see, when the weather's mild, HVAC demand slows, but we still need calls for our technicians, and that's why we run our free furnace sale. Here's how it works. When you have any hour services install a new air conditioner, we'll give you a new furnace for just the cost to install it. About 400 bucks. The furnace is free. You just pay the labor. All you have to do is call any hour services by March 31st to schedule a free estimate with one of our HVAC supervisors. They'll explain all your options and exactly how much you can save on a new furnace and air conditioner. Again, when you have any hour services install a new air conditioner, we'll give you a new furnace for just the cost to install it. About 400 bucks. The furnace is free. You just pay the labor. If you think you might be interested, call any hour services today and schedule your free estimate. 801-443-7400. You can Google any hour services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Let me tell you a little bit about the KSL News Radio app. Uh, yeah, it's good for radio. 
But if you want to see us for some reason and you want to watch us fighting back and forth or, you know, arguing, you can see us. Uh, there's a video version. There's a video option on the KSL News Radio app. Go ahead and download it. It's free. You can listen live. There's push notifications. There you go. The KSL News Radio app on Dave and Dujanovic. What's in your garden? Oakdale Organic Compost Nutrient-Rich Formula makes vegetables, flowers, trees, and lawns grow beautifully. No wonder it's the official compost of Thanksgiving Point. Visit Oakdale.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Andrew Gordon. First, a British court is delaying WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition to the United States. Second, this summer Breeze Airways will add Dallas, Texas to its list of flight destinations. Fares for the flights will start at just $69. Third, April 8th will be the last total solar eclipse visible in the United States until the year 2044. Right now it's 45 and partly cloudy in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Dujanovic. Priced out. Housing. Special coverage with Dave and Dujanovic. You know, we team up with the Stern team. Um, they've been great to work with uh, for our housing coverage. And, and this Zillow report caught our eye. Uh, it says that house hacking and interest in it has exploded. Uh, recently, especially among the younger generation. And what house hacking is, is you um, you rent out a room. You, you just rent out a room, perfect stranger. You put your uh, room in your home up for, up for rent. Uh, you take phone calls, and then you pick somebody from the probably hundreds of calls that you're going to get, and then you charge them five to $600 a month. At least that's the going rate that we found along the Wasatch Front. It seems like a slam dunk. And I told you I wanted to to push you with two hands into this life hack. If you take that $500, so say you're in, in a home, and you can take that $500 for renting out your room, and you apply that directly to your mortgage, it goes directly to principal. Do you know how much you can save? It will cut your 30-year mortgage down 13 years. That's incredible. 13 years. If you're applying $500 extra a month, you will save over $61,000 in interest over the life of the loan. We asked for phone calls. Would you do it? Maybe you're more interested in doing it now that you've heard what Dave's said about it. Slicing that much time 13 years off your mortgage is You're incredible. down to 17 years on a 30-year loan. You're paying it off in 17 years. Give us a call, 801-575-TALK. Uh, let us know. Would you do it? Would you rent out a room in your home to a stranger to make extra income every single month? You're sacrificing privacy. You're sacrificing convenience. Sure. I get it. But holy cow, you want to talk about a way to, to earn wealth? This seems like... A slam dunk. Aaron in Logan, you you think that uh, this might uh, bump up against some problems with uh, insurance coverage? Well, I'm an insurance agent, and I just wanted to point out that sometimes homeowner policies can mm. have uh, exclusions for subletting or That's great you know, point. define that you're not allowed to do that. So if you don't check with your insurance agency, um, that could just invalidate your homeowner policy. So, if you're caught doing that and it's left sure. out of your policy. Yeah, and especially if something happens and they file a claim. Yeah. Like if they slip and fall on a grape in the kitchen and they hit their head and now you've got a claim. <laughs> I mean, I even think about all of the exactly. I used to be a I used exactly. to be a landlord. Um I'm also a mom of three, so I know anything can happen at any time inside a house. But so do you think right. shopping around if your insurance uh, policy forbids that uh, there, there is an option to maybe go out and find another insurance policy though, right? Sure, absolutely. There's there's so many different options available, and a lot of times people aren't even aware of, you know, the options that they do or don't have. So it's absolutely a great idea to shop around. My company is kind of um, exclusionary when it comes to things like that, but uh, there's lots of nationwide companies that have absolutely no problem with it. So. Aaron, thank you for your call. Uh, hold the line. We're going to get, uh, actually, when your call comes through, we can't grab phone numbers. So I'm going to ask our producer, Caitlin, to grab your number. So when we talk about all things insurance in the future, we can give you a, a phone call and see if you'll join us with, with some questions that we have. I also think, and it was interesting, when you were describing which generation would be most comfortable, Gen Z, uh, 
millennials, they were over 50% said they would feel comfortable doing this. But the baby boomers, the fixed income mm-hmm. crew, what was the number? 3%? 4%. 4%. And they're, if, if they've been in a home for a long time, they might not need the extra I will income. say this, though. I, I can see a great value. If you're a baby boomer, if you're on a fixed income and money is tight, and maybe you own your home, and you have, like, I think of my mom's house right now. She's the only one that lives in it. She's got four rooms. She could have three roommates. She could be. <laughs> you gotta ask. You gotta ask Grandma Barb if she'd be willing to. Grandma do that. Barb is super social butterfly. She would love it. Milo, uh, you don't like the idea. It sounds like you're be uncomfortable with it. Yeah, I would be uncomfortable having a stranger stay in my house, especially since I have kids. And then if yeah. things go bad, I mean, they have more rights on their end because of squatter rights. So they could say they could one month they pay, but then imagine how long it takes to get them out if they get so yeah. comfortable, too. You, you got it. My view, just being previously a landlord, um, you got to have a, a lease agreement. You got to have something written um, in firmly in place that everybody signed and uh, making sure that you your rights are protected because you are basically a landlord at that point. But even then, evictions are messy. Yeah, it's, it's messy. Yeah. I've, been, I, I've been down that road. It's messy. Kendall, Murray, have you done this before? I have, yeah. And? I, I use it. Yeah, it's been very successful. Um, I rent out to traveling nurses, and typically they'll rent for anywhere from 30 days to as much as six months, and a background check, everything's great. Can we uh, be rude and ask you kind of like, you knew I was, Dave knew I, I was going in know. for the, I was leaning in for the the uncomfortable question, as I like to do, how much a month you make? Uh, I, well, I, I do the primary bedroom, so I like to have their, their own private bathroom, and it's 1100 a month. Oh! Kendall, <laughs> you're an inspiration. Uh, what are you? Okay, okay. Kendall, there's about 50 things that I love about you right now. Number one, you're sacrificing the best room in the house <laughs> and you're pulling 1100 out of that 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 to me this is the this is the problem we complain so often about what we don't want to do and what we're not willing to do and we, you know we don't want to we don't want to have a stranger living well look what look what the benefits are how much of a game changer would eleven hundred dollars a month be you for do the you? Math and, and your, do the math in your oh, uh, mortgage calculator. If five hundred saves you thirteen <laughs> years on a thirty-year mortgage, does it just double it? I'm, I'm sure the math, the amortization schedule is far more complicated. But if you put but, all of that money, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. think about it. If if you're ten mortgage years, mortgage. that's one hundred twenty thousand yeah. dollars plus. Alexi, our producer. Um, you're a millennial, right? I'm uh, Gen Z, I think. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't keep you all straight. That's okay. It's confusing. But you've rented. You have been um, mm-hmm. a tenant uh, in one of these situations yes. where you rented a room. How much? In, in Salt Lake County? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in uh, Liberty Park area. And? For 600 a month. 600 a yeah. month. How did how did that go just generally for you? Um, I want to say that I'm still a believer in this idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, but I had, unfortunately, a bad experience with this um i would do it again but i would be more careful with looking for good and landlords who actually want to take care of their place because my problem was that the landlord quote unquote the homeowner was living in the home with me and a couple other people and um there was like something wrong with the house our utilities were always 130 a person every month which like four people in the house something's wrong no way and so we would complain and nothing would get done. He didn't really have a responsibility to take care of anything because, because he was he the wasn't homeowner. Really, yeah, he basically was a homeowner and he didn't uh, really have any obligation to do that kind of stuff like wow. a maintenance man or an apartment building manager would or something like that. So even though you had a bad experience with it, you're still open to the idea you would just be a little more selective? Oh, yeah. Well, I think it changes if they don't live in the house with you. If someone rents out, like, a house that they're not living in, they do have more of an obligation to take care of it. Mm -hmm. But when somebody is renting out, like, an upstairs room and he lives downstairs, like I was. That's a twist. It's a twist. That's a twist It's a different. um, And a dynamic, and it feels uncomfortable. Legality. Yeah. Look, fix fix the air conditioning unit, but you're there in the kitchen with the guy, Mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to dealing with a landlord over the phone. Mm -hmm. Well. 
Thanks for sharing your experience. Yeah. And it was what, 600 a month? 600 a month. Plus utilities. Plus utilities. Wow. Yeah. Can I go back to the travel nursing thing? <laughs> Quickly. Like how often are they even there? I know travel nurses. They work like yeah. 80 hours a week. A straight ahead, Boyd is going to take us to Washington, D.C., where uh, several members, Republican members of the House of Representatives have, have recently, like, just quit. They're done. What is going on? It is the, the worst year of the nine years and three months that I've been in Congress. Um, and having talked to former members, it's the worst year in 40, 50 years uh, to be in Congress. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. 11 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Andrew Gordon. KSL's top stories this hour. The Supreme Court will be mulling over arguments by anti abortion groups for the next few months. The court spent their Tuesday hearing arguments over how the FDA regulations access to the abortion drug Mifepristone. ABC's Devin Dwyer reports a majority of justices seem skeptical any doctors were actually harmed by the relaxed FDA rules. The attorney representing these plaintiffs, Erin Hawley, the wife of Senator Josh Hawley, the conservative from Missouri, a darling of the conservative right, really struggled to provide specific examples other than to say merely being in the presence of a patient that had struggled with a mifepristone abortion was enough in her view. Anti-abortion groups say access to the drug could lead to more visits to emergency rooms where doctors who oppose abortion may be forced to assist. In other national news, the NAACP and others are speaking out after the University of Utah women's basketball team says they were the target of racism while staying in Idaho. KSL News Radio Adam Small has details. NAACP Salt Lake Branch President Janetta Williams said in a statement she was disappointed to hear about what happened to the team while they were staying in Quarter Lane and that it should not be taken lightly. A school admin originally told KSL.com a few days before the Lady Utes played Gonzaga. The team was headed into a restaurant when a truck pulled up to them and someone in it yelled the N-word at them. They say it happened again on their way out. Not only are local police investigating, Williams says she's been told the FBI is involved. Your money at this moment, the Dow is up 272 points. Coming up, we've got temperatures in the 50s for the rest of the week. KSL Weather and Traffic is next. KSL News Time, 11.01. It's a priority for us at this station to bring you all sides of a story and to talk about the news fairly, completely. Get all the facts and be really aware. Utah's Morning News with us, Tim and Amanda. Weekday mornings, 5 to 9 on KSL News Radio. Advertising used to be simple. Your options were radio, TV, newspaper, and let's not forget the yellow pages. Now it seems like a tidal wave of options. Podcasts, cable TV, streaming, OTT, CTV, audio networks, smart speakers. On top of that, you need digital marketing for your website along with SEM, SEO, display, video, YouTube, email, and all the social media platforms. Look, you're the expert in your business. Wouldn't it be nice to have an expert to market you? We are Bonneville Salt Lake, the local marketing and media company you know and trust. We reach customers across all digital and social platforms and have the reach of traditional advertising available as well. We find your customer anytime, anyplace, anywhere, on any device here in Utah or anywhere in the world. We work to optimize your results with our in-house local team of experts, providing you with qualified leads, not just impressions. Contact Stephanie Palmer at KSL for a free consultation including a complete digital audit with no obligation or cost to you email s palmer at ksl.com that's s palmer at ksl.com i'm what you might call very good at hide and seek this one time my parents had to round up the whole neighborhood to track me down it was a mess a lot of tears well now that we got xfinity we have wi-fi all over the house including all my favorite super secret hiding spots so I can kill time in here by streaming my shows and... Ha! Found ya. The heck? How? You left to find my tablet on. This generation, ruining the game with their performance enhancers. Get wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity for a reliable connection throughout your home. Now through June 21st, get gig speed internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and free Wi-Fi equipment included when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. Gig speed Wi-Fi requires gig internet and Xfinity gateway. Xfinity mobile requires Xfinity internet. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. 
Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. It's a good drive on the Valley freeways. No delays, no crashes. But we do have an accident in Salt Lake City on a surface street, 1300 South, 500 West. Flock to IFA Country Stores from March 25th to March 31st to grow your chicks and chickens with backyard specials on everything. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Your weather forecast, we've got temperatures in the 50s and mostly clouds for the rest of the week. Right now it's 45 degrees and partly cloudy. I'm Andrew Gordon from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic have inside sources. Republicans are having an issue keeping people in Congress. Oh, look at that. I just made Boyd smile. Um, it was not, uh, what, a couple weeks ago that Representative uh, Ken Buck said this. It is the, the worst year of the nine years and three months that I've been in Congress. Um, and having talked to former members, it's the worst year in 40, 50 years uh, to be in Congress. And he left. <laughs> He's done. He's not alone. <laughs> Lots of people are leaving. A lot of different reasons they're leaving. Uh, a lot of it is job satisfaction. Uh, Boyd, if I'm being totally honest, I don't have a lot of patience for this. Yeah, and it's an inter- interesting thing because it's uh, the Republicans have uh, have some big problems with people running for the doors, uh, and so do the Democrats. The Democrats have uh, lost uh, not only lost people completely leaving Congress, but also just people leaving the party and becoming independents uh, in there. And so both sides are clearly not uh, doing a great job of retention <laughs> when it comes to their members, uh, but you can hardly blame them. Uh, it is uh, such a paralyzed Congress right now that very little work is being done. A lot of people are asking themselves the question, can I make a difference here or am I better off doing something else? How many Republicans have left Congress? Because I think this is where it really matters for the Republican Party, and I think where people in Utah would be interested because they hold the majority. Yeah. But the majority has been getting chipped away a little that's, by little. That's so right. this does matter in a big way for the Republicans because they don't want to lose that. So Absol- what absolutely. are we looking at? So uh, so you're actually down to with the uh, representative from Wisconsin announcing that he's leaving this week. Uh, the majority for the Republicans in the House will be – one. It will be one. Everybody is showing up, right? <laughs> Everyone's showing up. And so, yeah, to Dave's point, that really becomes an issue. If somebody is sick, if somebody has a family emergency, I mean, that happens all the time. You're talking about 435 members in the House, 100 in the Senate. Uh, and so there are illnesses. There are family situations that come up and, and members miss. Uh, and with such slim majorities in both houses of Congress, uh, it becomes a big deal pretty fast. I remember Representative Dan Crenshaw got um, uh, just blasted for leaving because uh, he used to be a, a Navy SEAL. Anyway, he went to a funeral of, uh, of a Navy SEAL and missed a vote, and people were up in arms. Yeah. And that was with a, a fairly, you know, at least a handful of a majority. But to your point, it, it doesn't allow any wiggle room. Yeah, there, there's no wiggle room. Uh, and, and really, in either chamber, Chuck Schumer has the same problem uh, in the Senate when it comes to the Democrats because it is a small majority. And so everyone's got to show up. And, and sadly, there's far too many members of Congress who've become very comfortable missing votes. I think the only person you can really point to uh, as the the diehard always in attendance is Susan Collins, uh, who hasn't missed a vote, I think, in like 30 years. Wow. So let's get to the fix. Uh, As Representative Ken Buck was leaving Congress, returning to Colorado, um, this is what he said uh, on CBS. In Colorado, we have largely moved to a one-party system, and we can see what happens when there is little balance in, in government. I I fear that happening in the federal government. Where he says Republican leaders are focused on personality over principles. We're so concerned with who has more Instagram followers. Uh, It's just, it's crazy. He he doesn't just hint, he flat out basically says, like, it's just gone to the internet. I mean, it's it's about sound bites and who can get... 
That's headlines right. on yeah. Instagram and, and Facebook. Yeah, it's all performative politics. It's, there aren't a lot of serious policy makers anymore. Of course, we have Utah Senator Mitt Romney, who's stepping down at the end of his term this year. Uh, much, I think, for the same reasons of, look, I can make a difference in a lot of other places. So why hang out with the crazies who are getting all the attention uh, and preventing real work and real policy from from being done? This is what frustrates me when you call them whether it's the flat head, flat forehead flat forehead. society, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are just pounding yeah. their forehead because they're so frustrated. Uh, listen, the solution, you may think there are solutions mm-hmm. elsewhere, but you ran for this office. Mm-hmm. You had people that gave up their vote to you mm-hmm. to represent them. Yeah. It is a sacred duty that. You don't get to leave. I'm sorry. I, barring absolute catastrophe, you don't get to leave. Yeah. I I gave you the the health and the welfare of my family. It is your duty and responsibility to stay and make it work. And if it doesn't work, then you keep trying. Yeah. And, and so really interesting, I think it's an important clarifier there, Dave, is that the vast majority of these that are leaving are leaving at the end of their term. Yes. So most of them are just saying, I'm not signing up for another tour of duty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that's one thing. I completely agree to your point. You sign up for the job uh, unless there's a real shift in family health, you know, mental health, whatever it right. may be, then that's a little different animal. But those that who are who are just a little tired, uh, that doesn't that doesn't quite cut it because you you knew what you were signing up for, uh, although I think most people don't realize how painful it's going to be. Uh, what do we running think, is great. What do we Governing think of this? Smart. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski came out. She's a Republican. Mm-hmm. Came out um, and 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 suggested that she won't rule out becoming an independent. Uh, Arizona uh, Senator Kirsten Sinema left the Democratic Party what like a year ago or so mm-hmm. to become an independent. Uh, Murkowski from Alaska been there a long, long time. I think since the early two thousands. Uh, saying I'm not going to rule out becoming an independent, citing, you know, the party's allegiance to Donald Trump as a reason. Are you considering being an independent at this point? Oh, I think I'm very (laughs) independent-minded. Officially, Uh, though, officially. I just regret that our party is seemingly becoming a party of Donald Trump. Yeah, you becoming an independent caucusing with Republicans, is that something you're open to? I, I am navigating my way through some very interesting political times. Let's just leave it at that. She didn't say no. But what do we think about us party swapping because of, yeah. you know, one, one party leader or another? I mean. Yeah. And so very so let's, let's look at those. Uh, so Kirsten Sinema mm-hmm. and Senator Murkowski. So one left the Democratic Party, became an independent, right. Kirsten Sinema. She still caucuses with the Democrats. So she still... As far as committee assignments and who's in power, in other words, who's the majority in the Senate, she still caucuses with the Democrats. Uh, Lisa Murkowski actually had to run as an independent in Alaska one year because she lost in the Republican primary, went as an independent, still won, and then came back to the Republican Party. So Lisa Murkowski has sort of been across that spectrum before, and she is very independent. Isn't she one of the only <clears throat> write-in candidates in the nation to ever to win, ever win? A statewide office? Yeah, as a it's as incredible. A senator. So she's yeah. obviously quite popular if she yeah. can get enough Alaska residents. I don't know, all 10 of them. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I'll do. That's no, that's is no that, is that the same thing, though? Is party swapping so, the same thing as just totally leaving Congress? Yeah. That, there's uh, there's not as much. I wish there was actually more of that. And, of course, you have Bernie Sanders, who is an independent, caucuses with the Democrats. Uh, what I would love to see is all of those independents get together and form an independent caucus. Because guess what? They'd be the majority. And then everything would change. Uh, but That's it, but, intriguing. Yeah. but but that but that takes some real political yeah. courage because you would be putting yourself at yeah. great risk in terms of reelection. Uh, but again, if you're going to be exhausted, exasperated and leave at the end of your term anyway, this is something that I think is worth taking a swing at. I would like to just see from Republicans and Democrats, I'd like to see them vote against their party every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's become such a rubber stamp party. At this point, you know, and and any time somebody does dare have the audacity like Mitt Romney to go against the party and say, you know what, I think Donald Trump is problematic. Then he's the rhino. Then everybody is freaking out. Whereas I think you've got 100 senators. You're telling me every single one of them is in lockstep with 
the party in that direction and every single Republican is the same way, I'm like, I, I just don't buy it. Yeah, and, and it's really interesting. If you actually go look at the vote numbers, they will surprise you. So Mitt Romney voted with Donald Trump far more than Utah Senator Mike Lee did. Pretty interesting. So when you talk about those that are kind of in lockstep or rubber stamp, uh, and there's same things on, on the Democratic side. Right. There's some people like Dick Durbin who you'd say, oh, he's like hardcore Democrat. He votes against his party all the time. Uh, you, you've got guys like Senator Lee and and uh, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to think who's it, Cory Booker, uh, who often end up voting the same on a lot of the things around judiciary. Uh, and so you kind of have to dig into it a little bit in terms of how often it is lockstep. The lockstep stuff matters, we see though. is yeah. the big stuff, uh, is the big political stuff the big political stuff because that's where everyone is afraid and what they're afraid of those who want to stay they're afraid of losing and so they want to do what the party bosses want them to do those who are independent and who are less worried about staying uh guys like joe manchin from west virginia so he's a democrat but he'll look at the democrats and say you think i'm selling my soul for that this is not the greatest job I've ever had, and he's willing to do that. So you have people on both sides of the aisle that, that do that pretty regularly. We just don't hear about it nearly as much, nor do we hear about the bipartisan work that actually does get done. Uh, and there are great people on the right and the left and the left and the right and the middle who do some really important things. We tend not to hear a lot about it, though. But how often do those go through the House, the Senate, and then end up on the president's desk? <laughs> Boyd, thank you. I love it. Great conversation. Uh, this segment of the David Dujanovic Show is brought to you by Window World. Replace your windows and doors without the hassle or baloney. Call Window World of Utah today. USA Today uh, published an article uh, that says that Utah is the most affordable state in all of the nation to live. Personally, I don't buy it. Um, and I think it's an important conversation to continue with Luz Escamilla. She's the minority leader of the Utah State Senate. Let's ask her what she sees with her own constituents. Uh, does she feel and do her constituents feel like Utah is the most affordable place in the nation to live? Dave and Dujanovic. Current events can have a lot of moving parts. Our job is to make it easy to keep up. You're part of a bigger world. So spend 15 or 20 minutes here and be part of it. Join us weekday mornings between 5 and 9 on KSL News Radio. Do you enjoy fishing, hunting, or just soaking in the beautiful outdoors? Then you need to check out the KSL Outdoors show airing Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. and midnight on KSL 5 TV. Outdoors with me, Adam Eagle, is a unique show that takes viewers on a journey through Utah's beautiful backcountry. Watch it live every weekend or find the outdoor show on YouTube, KSLoutdoors.com, Facebook, and Instagram. It's the KSL Outdoors show brought to you by Camp Chef. The GOP speaker is getting weaker. Hopefully, somebody will step forward and lead. Does a new vote against Mike Johnson throw the U.S. House in turmoil again? Everyone is unserious about having a serious conversation about the finances in this country. Listen this week as Johnson navigates Republican discontent. Get the latest on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson this week from 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. I remember growing up, my job when mom went shopping was I had to carry the rock salt. Uh, we had a water softener, and I had to grab the 50 pounds, I think they were back then, 50-pound bags of rock salt and dump them in the bin, and we had soft water. Well, when I bought my home, we didn't have soft water, and it, we went without it for about 10 years, and I started realizing you know, how much of a difference Having hard water in the house is versus soft water. Uh, felt a real difference on my skin, laundry, expensive appliances, the dishes. I can't tell you how much money I spent on expensive chemicals to, to try to get those hard water spots off the dishes. Uh, so Connecticut of Utah installed ours about seven or eight years ago. We've loved it, never had an ounce of problem. I uh, Still got to throw a little salt in the bin, but it, the Connecticut water softener is so efficient, uh, it uses... Uh, just a third of the salt of the other guys, so it's very, very efficient. Check them out. Give them a call. Let them come out to your house and show you the difference that soft water makes. 801-576-8600. That's Connecticut of Utah. They're an authorized Connecticut dealer. 801-576-8600 or online at softwaterutah.com. Hey! 
Have you saved more than $200,000 in an IRA or 401k? You may not realize it now, but you've got a big problem on your hands. And that problem is taxes. Because if you don't take advantage of some tax planning strategies now, Uncle Sam could take a big chunk of your hard-earned retirement savings. Learn how you could reduce the taxes on your IRA and 401k with a free retirement tax savings analysis. It's from Boss Retirement Solutions. If you've saved more than $200,000, schedule your free tax strategy session now by calling 801-896-9622. Discover the tax planning strategies that could dramatically reduce your taxes in retirement. Call 801-896-9622. That's 801-896-9622. Advisory services offered through Boss Retirement Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Insurance products and services offered through Boss Retirement Solutions. They say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert. You may not have that kind of time for weatherization, energy efficiency, and appliance rebates, but we do. Dominion Energy's ThermWise program has experts who know where and how to save money. They help homeowners and businesses find simple ways to conserve natural gas and rebates through upgrades that may help to save even more. We put our energy into helping you conserve it so you can spend your 10,000 hours becoming an expert in what matters to you. Start with a home energy plan at thermwise.com. In the history of the world, nobody has ever said, yay, we need a new roof. But when things aren't quite right up there, don't wait. Call IWC Roofing, the highest rated roofing contractor in Utah. IWC has been in business since 1997, and they offer the best value pricing in Utah, along with the best warranty in the business. They're one of the few Owens Corning Platinum Certified Roofers in the entire state. They have their own installers, no subcontractors crawling around on your roof and at IWC Roofing they'll send you pictures from up on the roof to show that you're getting exactly what you paid for in most cases they'll re-roof your home in one day they'll clean up and pressure wash your driveway IWC roofs more homes than any other company in Utah so they can offer you a better price and right now an extra $1,500 off your new roof call IWC Roofing for a no pressure quote 801-232-5690 call 801-232-5690 or go to IWCRoofingUtah.com. I love my KSL News Radio app. It's totally free to download. Um, it takes just a few minutes uh, to get it onto your smartphone, and it gives me all of the information I need about the latest stories uh, that are happening throughout the day. Uh, it is definitely one for my fellow news junkies. Uh, and make sure you set your notifications because every time we update the app with a new news story, we notify you right to your smartphone. Getting help with electrical repairs is easier than you think. All you have to do is call Any Hour Services or schedule an appointment at anyhourservices.com. No one helps more homeowners than Any Hour Services. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Andrew Gordon. First, the Supreme Court will hear arguments from anti-abortion groups regarding FDA regulations of the abortion drug mefepristone. Second, local police and the FBI are investigating acts of racism towards the University of Utah women's basketball team while the team was traveling in Idaho. Third, the IRS says the average tax refund is around $3,000, up 5.1% from last year. Right now it's 46 degrees and mostly cloudy in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Dujanovic. Let's get to our uh, top local story once again. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Dujanovic. Special coverage of the top local story. And I actually thought this was a joke when I first heard it. Uh, turns out it's not. USA Today print, you know, publishes an article that says Utah is the most, not one of the most, the most, the most affordable place in all of America to live. I don't buy it. And I am not totally surprised. Now, there's a few caveats here that are that are important, and it's important to lay this out. Number one, Utah makes good money. In fact, the median income in Utah is $89,000. That means half of Utah makes more than eighty nine, dollars and half make less. I in no way want to diminish those that are making less. Uh, times are tough. Budget is tight. I absolutely understand that. But I think I was surprised that if you're looking around Utah, about half or almost at six figures or better. But my mind goes to houses are so expensive. Gas is uh, creeping back up again. Daycare, 
the cost of daycare for families. Uh, that's been something that uh, state uh, senator and uh, minority leader of the Utah Senate, Luz Escamilla, has been working on. And she she's joining us live on the line. You're trying to make daycare more affordable. And I know I just know that's just what one of the many issues um, that are facing Utah families. What, what are you seeing? Do you, do you feel like Utah is the most affordable place in all of America to live? And, and how do your constituents feel and, and what, are, um, what are they feeling? Um, well, thank you, and good morning. And uh, definitely, I was uh, one is I don't think, and at least in my district, I don't think my constituents uh, agree with USA Today. And and in fairness, I think it's important to see what um, what were the expenses that USA Today was looking into, right? Because they were not considering childcare, or the fact that you have two parents uh, in the household in the workplace, where Utah continues to be a state with more women in the workplace because of need. I mean, they're picking up all those part-time jobs. I mean, my district, most of our families have two to three jobs just to barely make it. So I think I think it's, you know, looking into the, they were looking to FICA contribution, homeowner costs, groceries, and healthcare costs. We do have a lower healthcare cost. We have a more younger population, healthier population. That certainly uh, reduces some of the healthcare costs compared to other states. We also have a very large healthcare, um, you know, carry. I mean, a healthcare group here that's a nonprofit. So, I mean, I think some of those factors. But I, the reality is, and maybe this gives us an opportunity to talk about a couple of things. One, Utah is a growing and very strong economy, and we are very happy for that. But you do have the vast majority of our working families are struggling to be, especially our younger commun- uh, families, to buy their first home. So the state legislature and, you know, state government has been pushing some home first home buyer pieces. But, I mean, child care, I have to tell you, is the number one issue for women when you when you start uh, talking to women in the workforce and families in general. And we haven't done anything. So I, I think child care has become more and more expensive in the state of Utah when you talk to families. And food insecurity. I mean, groceries overall have, are more expensive, but also how many families in our state do not know where their meal will come this evening is one in 10. So those numbers continue to be, uh, continue to increase, unfortunately. So I, yeah, there may be other components that are helping our state and, and we need to continue to be positive, but we also want quality of life for all Utah. Senator Luz Escamilla joins us right now. And uh, in part, when I looked at this, I thought what's important is the, the, the debate is not necessarily, hey, is, is everything affordable here in Utah? It really is comparatively speaking. If we were to look at other Correct. states, and uh, if you think it's bad here, wait till you see gas prices in California. Is there a state that you look at and say, you know what, they have absolutely hit this nail on the head. We should follow this example. Is there something that pops into your mind? I think it depends on the issue, and you're you're absolutely correct. And we, I mean, we are in Utah because we love living in Utah, right? And people are moving. We have tons of migration to our state, and you know, people may feel different about those levels of migration. But the reality is, we have a strong economy, meaning there's jobs, and we have a, almost a non unemployment rate, right? Lower than I mean, we're hitting the two percent. Yeah, that's a great place from an economic perspective. Businesses love to do business in Utah. Our education is doing better, but we still have tons of kiddos. So I think what we're what we need to define and to answer your question about best practices in other places depends on the issue. I think Utah can be, I mean, definitely be that holistic, you know, comprehensive place to cre- create that quality of life because we have the outdoors, we have a beautiful place that we live, but we still struggle with air quality, for example, right? Specific areas have a bigger problem with um, air quality, and we have to address emissions. So let's work on that. Childcare, I will say, to me, is the number one issue for working families. And we need to do something. It's Now people are spending more, almost 20 to 30% of their income on childcare. And if you add that to your now rent or housing cost, um, you know, it, it, it's impossible to get your, your fir- you know, to buy your first home for many of those young families. So when you see that overall picture is what we need to focus and really think about how you know, for some of these families, they're literally are. We have I've met people who have three jobs just to barely make it, and both uh, parents in the household are both working. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I, I 
You articulated uh, so well, uh, Senator, uh, what what I was not able to articulate as well as you did. Um, Of course, uh, you've been in the in the legislature for a very long time and you're dealing with your constituents uh, who are day to day or just trying to make ends meet. And I I have not felt for a long time. I did in the beginning when I first moved here and through much of the 90s that Utah was a pretty affordable place to live. But I have felt over the years that something changed um, and it is becoming more and more affordable. So I was absolutely shocked when I heard um, that USA Today had put us as number one most affordable place to live in the United States. But she she brought a much bigger perspective and context to the problems that many Utah families are facing. And we've had major changes that in just the last five years. Housing specifically, we've seen home prices increase by 50 percent, 100 percent in some cases. So it will be very, very interesting to see what happens in the next 10 years if we play this affordable housing game or affordable Utah all over again. I think you have to definitely look at uh, daycare costs. You you have to look at that when you're considering um, how much it costs to live in a state. And compare that to what it is in other states. I think you also have to consider, you know, income taxes, whether you collect state income tax. They don't collect state income taxes or higher taxes with property taxes. So there's a lot that goes into, in my view, deciding what state is the most affordable. I don't feel Utah fits that bill. I just, I hear from too many people. I have, uh, you know, 20 something year old kids who are, are hanging out with 20 something year old adults, um, and I hear their stories. And it is so expensive now for them and the next generation that I just I can't see us as number one most affordable place in the whole United States. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Minority Leader of the Utah State Senate, Luz Escamilla, for joining the conversation. Straight ahead, uh, speaking of expenses, uh, Dollar Tree just announced. Um, it's raising prices again. <laughs> wow. 11:30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Andrew Gordon. KSL's top stories this hour. Election year is here, and that means scammers will try to get your money by pretending to be a legitimate campaign. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit has more details. We see this happen every election season. Scammers send text messages, emails, or calls all in an effort to get your bank account details or download malware to your device. Melanie Fox with the Better Business Bureau says one of the ways scammers try to sound legit is by citing personal information they find about you online. If you have a public profile especially, but even if you have a private profile, don't put out things that are just, you know, too personal where someone could reach out and call you, and then you think, oh, they know me. If you get a scam message, then report it to the Bureau's scam report. Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. In other national news, the NCAA removed an official during halftime of the Chattanooga NC State Tournament game Saturday because of a background conflict. The Associated Press reports the NCAA learned the referee had earned a master's degree from Chattanooga, and officials aren't supposed to referee games involving their alma maters. Your money at this moment, the Dow is up 284 points. Coming up next, moderate chance of rain this week. KSL weather and traffic is next. KSL News Time, 1132. Here's a way to get breaking news updates anywhere you go. At the store or in a work meeting, you can get breaking news on your phone. You can quickly read it, swipe, or click for more. It's super discreet, super fast. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Three days only. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Save thousands on hot tubs and swim spas. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in-stock spas. Utah State Fair Park. Hot tubs discounted 40 to 80% to the lowest possible price. Starting at $29.99. Free professional delivery. Take possession tomorrow, next week, next month, or next season. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Utah State Fair Park. Shop over a dozen models of swim spas from 11 feet to over 19 feet. Swim spas offer low impact exercise, active family fun, unsurpassed relaxation, and installation in one day. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Everything must go. Free parking, free admission. You can't afford to miss this. It's a major manufacturer's liquidation of hundreds of in stock spas. Friday, noon to 8 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The hot tub and swim spa sale. Utah State Fair Park. Visit hot tub and swim spa sale.com. When you crash your car, you get it fixed. When you 
your computer crashes, you get a new one. But what will you do if you've been saving in a 401k or an IRA and the market crashes? If you're in your 30s or 40s, you'll be just fine. But if you're in or near retirement, you could be in trouble. Mike Stevens and his team at Capital Wealth Advisors are here to help. They can run a risk analysis to see if you're too heavily invested in the market. Don't let the ups and downs of Wall Street control you or your retirement dreams. Call 801-210-5500 today to schedule your risk analysis with Mike Stevens and the team at Capital Wealth Advisors. That's 801-210-5500. Crashes happen. Question is, are you ready? Capital Wealth Advisors, 801-210-5500. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Capital Wealth Advisors, LLC, a state of Utah registered investment advisor. Hey guys, meet Salt Lake City's favorite men's health expert. Hi, I'm Eric Ramos, healthcare provider at Revive Men's Health. I've been treating men suffering from low T and ED for over five years. And before that, I was a combat medic in the Army and a Navy corpsman in the Marine Corps, responsible for my men and their health every day. I understand firsthand the health challenges that impact men. Many of my patients come to me because they've noticed a lack of energy, loss of strength, increased belly fat, and even depression. Low T can impact your whole life, but so can proper treatment of it. And hearing that my patients are back to living life to the fullest, that's the best part of my job. Guys, if you're looking for affordable, guaranteed low T and ED solutions, contact Revive for a free T check and exam today, saving you $199. Call 801 263 7777. That's 801 263 7777. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. In Draper, we have a crash or a disabled vehicle, some kind of trouble in traffic. And this is southbound I-15 at 123rd South. It is over to the right, blocking a lane of travel and causing a little bit of backups. Plan your special evening out in one of Salt Lake's most unique dining, five alls in Foothill. Five courses, five star service and dining. Fivealls.com. Fivealls.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. We're looking at clouds, a little bit of rain, and temperatures in the 50s for the rest of the week. Right now it's 46 and mostly cloudy. I'm Andrew Gordon from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at KSLnewsradio.com. We are Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg uh, making some remarks right now at the White House regarding the bridge collapse in Baltimore. Um, moments ago, just saying that um, six people have died. Um, there's been some questions as to whether the search uh, for the men um, who were, I believe they're all men, uh, construction workers on that bridge at the time of the collapse at 1.38 yesterday morning. Um if the search was going to continue or not. Um, earlier this morning, Dave, we saw that they had resumed the search, although it sounded like even earlier than that, they had called off the search. Yeah, it really is a rescue situation right now. Let's go live. Uh, let's take CNN Live. Uh, Vice Admiral uh, Peter Gatier speaking live right now about it. While we didn't achieve the outcome that we had hoped for, it was a tremendous team effort in the treacherous operational conditions. As this aspect of the response shift to recovery operations and consistent with the president's direction to get the port up and running as soon as possible, the Coast Guard highest priority now is restoring the waterway for shipping, stabilizing the motor vessel Dolly and removing it from the site and coordinating a maritime casualty investigation under the leadership of the National Transportation and Safety Board. So just a couple of words on each one of those. So in terms of assessing, restoring the waterway, the Coast Guard is very tightly connected to the Army Corps of Engineers as they lead in that role. The Vice Admiral um, with the U.S. Coast Guard there speaking on what the the future holds. Uh, So think about this. That that cargo ship um, is blocking the waterway because it and, and so is the bridge. So the bridge is destroyed. Cars and cargo cannot go back and forth over that, um, and that's probably going to take who knows how long to repair. And then also they've got to open up that waterway because clearly, I mean, that 
cargo ship was transporting something. I, I don't know that we're clear yet on all of that, uh, what was in, in the in the in that cargo ship, but they've got to get that waterway open, Dave. And part of the, the problem is this is a, a very dirty, hard to see uh, part. It's just, it's, it's just dirty. So it's not like you can go in there and see everything. You have to use sonar. Uh, you're going to have to remove millions of pounds of bridge and debris that is sitting 40 to 60 feet below the water. So the the cleanup on this is almost incomprehensible how large this how large scale this is. They said they're going to have to use a marine salvage plan uh, and that the United States Coast Guard has uh, members of the Coast Guard on the cargo ship. Um, let's let's step back into it live for just a few seconds to listen to, to what he's saying. Next steps appropriate to uh, refloat the vessel and remove it from that area. The real uh, critical thing here is that, as you know, a portion of the bridge remains on the bow of that ship, and we will be coordinating very closely with the Army Corps of Engineers and their contractors to first affect the removal of that debris before the vessel can then be removed. The vessel bow is sitting on the bottom because of the weight um, of the um, of that bridge debris on there. Mm. Um, and there are underwater surveys that are happening by remotely operated vehicle. Divers will be in the water today to complete that underwater survey. Um, there's no indication that there's any flooding or any damage underneath the water line to that vessel. So the Coast Guard and is just saying that 56 of those containers, uh, according to a graphic I'm reading right now on Fox News, 56 containers have hazardous materials. That's what I wanted to know. Like, what is in those containers? We don't know maybe specifics, but they are carrying hazardous materials. So an already horrible and very precarious situation there um, in Baltimore gets even more dangerous when you consider that there's hazardous materials on board. And there are hundreds, hundreds of shipping containers on this cargo ship. So it is enormously loaded. And because again, it was just leaving port, the, the water to the, the floor is about 40 to 60 feet. And as you heard the, the vice admiral say, the bow of the boat with the, uh, with the bridge sitting on top of it has actually pushed the bow of the boat down to the, the floor uh, of the river. Dave, um, remind me uh, what you learned yesterday um, about this, this, how that traffic got stopped because of the May Day alert. Because I learned something more this morning about uh, what may have um, happened as a result of that May Day alert. But you were watching the video unfold as this cargo ship was um, moving at like eight miles an hour which I think we figured out would take, what, almost 20 minutes to actually stop it, um, and then just bashed into that bridge, and then the bridge collapses. But you said you noticed that cars were were stopping. Yeah, I noticed when when I was looking through the video, and, and I'd watched this video a, a dozen different times, I noticed that right before the collapse, you weren't seeing cars traveling actively across the bridge and then we learned shortly thereafter that there had been a mayday call mm -hmm. and that the the ship had relayed uh, the fact that they were having power issues that they didn't have control of the ship that there was a possibility that they would run into the bridge so they were able to shut down traffic on the bridge I heard during Utah's Morning News this morning, Tim and Amanda talking about this and uh, that the governor of Maryland was praising police officers for getting to that bridge in enough time to stop traffic. Wow. I mean, wow. Just another element of, you know, how lives were saved in the moment. And to give you an idea of how close of a call this was, as I'm watching this video, the collapse of the bridge happened just 33 seconds after the final car crossed the bridge. Wow. 33 uh, seconds. I, I want to return uh, now to this uh, live, live looks like a news conference. Um, it's not just a, a address to the nation, a, 
Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg taking questions. I do want to make it clear that we've just learned from the Vice Admiral of the Coast Guard that those 56 hazardous containers on that cargo ship, he is saying that there is no threat right now. There is no threat to the public. So they look like they feel like they have that situation under control. But but let's continue listening to this news conference so live. The infrastructure law did authorize funding into the emergency relief account, which is the mechanism that is most likely to come into play here. Uh, last I checked, there was about $950 million uh, available, uh, but uh, also a long line of needs and, and projects behind that. So it is certainly possible, uh, I would go so far as to say likely, that we uh, may be turning to Congress uh, in order to help top up those funds. Uh, but that shouldn't be a barrier to the immediate next few days beginning to get the ball rolling. What would be the time frame? So, being asked a question about how the federal government will pay for this, um, I was, there are infrastructure funds there. You just heard him say they're well over nine hundred million dollars, uh, but that they would likely have to tap Congress for help. I just saw the Washington Post just three minutes ago posted uh, what it would take to rebuild Baltimore's key bridge. The original construction took five years to build. And about $316 million in today's dollars. So that was coming from a much different place. You have a massive, and it's going to cost millions and millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars just to clean everything up. And then you've got to address rebuilding the bridge. Straight ahead, and I know Maria Chaleos and our team of reporters and producers are also working on this story for noon, uh, the new newscast. Um, we've learned um, a lot more uh, regarding the police investigation uh, into the fact that multiple women have been terrorized all over the Wasatch Front as they were walking um, by, allegedly, by a man who um, drove his car into several women, landing several of them in the hospital, uh, brain bleeds, skull fractures. Um, Castle Television's Shara Park joined us earlier in the show with new information that she's learned and she's looking into. And it's information I think uh, the public needs to hear as well. That's next. Dave and Dujanovic. Here's a trick to podcasting at work and getting all the Utah news you love. Download the KSL News Radio app. The podcast for Utah's morning news and Dave and Debbie are right there. Dozens of podcasts a day. That's the app for KSL News Radio. I've always said you can make progress or you can make excuses, but you but you cannot do both. So no more excuses. I know when it comes to weight loss, you have all kinds of excuses. I'm too busy. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start next week after the holiday. Excuses or progress, what do you want? When I decided I was sick of the excuses and ready to make progress on my health and wellness, I turned to Soto Weight Loss. S-O-T-A, it stands for state-of-the-art because it is state-of-the-art weight loss. You don't have to do it alone. You have someone who can help you every step of the way. Deal with your emotional eating challenges. Help you make sure you're getting the right fuel into your body so you have health, energy, and vitality. As I've said many times, I lost 37 pounds in under 90 days. I'm two years in and no more excuses just results when it comes to your soda weight loss journey there's no time to lose only time to win start winning today at soda weight loss sota weight loss.com planning for spring at lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment and lowe's knows nothing feels better than free buy one select ego string trimmer leaf blower or mower kit get one select 56 volt battery free that's up to a 299 dollar value Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 4 3 while supplies last. Selection varies by location. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus 100 bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. <laughs> Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. When you use bounce dryer sheets and your clothes look amazing, it's the sheet. Less static in your life? Yeah, it's the sheet. 
smelling fresher than ever, it's the she eat. Oh, so soft fabric. Ooh la la. It's the sheet. Less wrinkles on your clothes. You know it's the sheet. Bounce dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness. Less static, less wrinkles. It's the sheet. What's keeping you from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make learning fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. And in 10 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. That's not long. It's not hard. It's, It's perfect. perfect. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. This is Derek Miller speaking on business. The Utah Office of Energy Development takes a thoughtful, measured approach to energy policy, prioritizing affordability, reliability, and sustainability. They're also a presenting sponsor for the upcoming One Utah Summit, our state's premier business summit. Deputy Director Harry Hansen joins us with more. Energy seems so simple. We flip a switch and there's light. We turn a key or press a button and the car engine starts. But behind this simplicity is a complex world of infrastructure and delivery systems. Today, we are managing rapidly changing energy technologies and priorities while working to keep our energy affordable and reliable because that's the foundation of strong economies. It's also the key to our national security. In this evolving world of energy, there are opportunities and challenges too. At the One Utah Summit, we'll be untangling some of these complexities during our presentation titled, Powering Our Future, the relationship between energy, the economy, and security. We'll also celebrate Oxion Energy, a local energy pioneer that is taking its technologies to new worlds, literally, and actively creating the energy future of tomorrow. To register for the One Utah Summit, visit oneutahsummit.utah.gov. Join the Utah Governor's Office of Economic Opportunity, Utah Office of Energy Development, World Trade Center Utah, and Salt Lake Chamber for these important global discussions. For more information, visit the One Utah Summit website. I'm Derek Miller with the Salt Lake Chamber. Speaking on business. Stay up to date with today's news on the KSL News Radio app. It's free. You can listen live. There's push notifications for the latest breaking news and stay in the know on the hot topics we've had our eye out on every day on Dave and Dujanovic. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Andrew Gordon. First, election year is here, so beware of scammers pretending to be a legitimate campaign by using personal info they find about you online. Second, a portion of 2400 South and South Salt Lake City will be closed for three weeks starting today. Drivers and residents will need to find alternative routes. Third, Kylie Black, a BYU student, won $30,000 for her startup, Powder Baby Dry Shampoo, a healthy non-aerosol dry shampoo. Right now, it's 46 and mostly cloudy in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Dejanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave, Dave and Dejanovic. According to police, uh, there's a 26 year old man who is driving around the Salt Lake County area in different parts, mainly in Salt Lake City, but there was a, a, a hit and run in Sandy as well, intentionally running over women, running them down uh, with his car. Uh, he's in court today. We'll have more on that uh, with Maria and the and the and the, her, and the news team uh, in the noon hour. Uh, but Shira Park of KSL Five TV, Dave, joined us earlier in the show to walk us through her concerns uh, that she's been looking into with the police investigation itself. Because right now he's facing more than a dozen dozen charges. But what took so long? Because this has been going on, apparently, for about eight months. So from the first incident to the most recent incident, what happened in between? And why did it take so long to find the same vehicle? It sounds like it was the same vehicle for the full eight months to find the white what Toyota Avalon or whatever. The sedan. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a white vehicle. You'd think at some point people are like, this is the exact same thing happening. Surveillance video, uh, witness reports, um, starts back in August. Last hit and run uh, happens just a couple of weeks ago. 
in the month of March. And then there seems to be this gap where police either don't get any reports or haven't connected the suspect to other reports um, of, you know, hit and run incidents. Because uh, from August to about February, there doesn't seem to be any reports, at least according to police. So um, there's just a lot of questions, but I think Sheriff raises the most important one. What was Salt Lake City Police, what was the police department doing with the information? And were they being aggressive enough? That's me asking that. Were they being aggressive enough to protect women who were getting hit by a man driving a Toyota Avalon? So let's let's listen to what Shara told us. Uh, it's about a four minute, five minute conversation we had with her earlier in the show, and she's continuing to investigate this. I do want to say that once these all started to really come about in February, where we had multiple within several days and weeks, the dots were connected fairly quickly. It, it's the case we go back to in August that I have a lot of questions about. I've submitted an open rec- records request to Salt Lake City Police to find out. At that point, that August of last year, they had a woman hit, they had two witnesses at the scene, and they had a license plate, and they identified the driver. And so they had a lot of information. What I want to know at this point, you guys, is where did, where did that go? Where yeah. was that investigation? Uh, where, where, uh, did police ever request charges be filed in that case? Because then we jump ahead to February, where it was my friend and her daughter that were oh, hit. in Sandy. In Sandy, just, just about 100 yards away from her house couple feet from my house. You know what I mean? Like it was that case where um, I found out about that hit and run and we did the story and her husband asked me, you know, does anything ever come from these cases? Do do they ever track track down the driver? Because at that point, Sandy PD didn't really have a solid lead other than maybe a fuzzy photo of a white car in the area. But when we look at how many white cars are in the city, there's no way to really pinpoint that at that point. And so I told him, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the key here is to get the information out there and warn others. Debbie and Dave, four days later, another woman, two women, reach out to us saying, I was hit. Their families reach out, say they were hit, and it sounds so eerily similar to what happened in Sandy. So we do that story, and we contact Sandy PD, and we contact Salt Lake City PD and say, hey, any chance this is the same vehicle, same MO, the, the driver came up behind them, hit them from behind, wow, left Sarah. them in the road, and suddenly... And then a, a week later, another case in Salt Lake City. All the dots started connecting. So a shout out to the police work that happened there in the month of February, headed into March, as they started to connect the dots. But when we go back to that first case, that's where my questions really lie. Uh, okay. And the first case happens uh, not in Sandy. In Salt Lake. It happens in Salt Lake August City. August 22nd. So now we have two different police departments yep. who have what seem to be cases that might be connected, connected. but two totally different jurisdictions. And what we don't know, it sounds like, is were those two jurisdictions, two different police departments, talking to each other? They were once we started identifying that there were similarities in the cases. So I remember my first call to Sandy PD after the the Sugar House. The two women were hit there as they were leaving. I think it was a yoga studio or something like that. Um, And so the question was right away, hey, any chance this is connected to your case in Sandy? And the response was, oh, we don't know. We haven't heard about it. You're connecting the dots. I I mean, I think a lot of people were starting to. But but yeah, sure. It was simply just following those threads. And and you guys, I just really want to praise the women who spoke up. These families who spoke up. You know, a a hit and run, just one off here, one off there. They don't, you know, you don't really start to connect those dots. But these women were paying attention and said, this sounds like what happened to me. And you guys, who knows right now? How many cases are really tied to this? That's what I'm 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 very concerned about that. So we look at this gap in this timeline, Shara, the, the first case happening in August, according to police, and then they jump ahead to several cases, a couple of cases in February and March. Well, what happened? We don't know if those are the only cases yet. Well, and we've heard from the DA saying that they're looking at multiple cases. So we have the four right now. Um and then who knows what could could come about as police continue to go back over some of these hit and run cases, try to identify the vehicles, find out if it was a white Avalon, and uh, start connecting more dots. And I I do wonder uh, it, at some point it makes a lot of sense right now, and I do have questions like why in the world did it take so long? Uh, and Cheryl brought up some great points. 
but I was curious how often hit and run crashes happen in America. And AAA reports that there's somewhere around three quarters to a million hit and run crashes in the United States. So is it just so common that you can't investigate every single one or really connect the dots? These women were seriously injured. Mm-hmm. You know, they were just tapped, which is still hard. Diff- you know, you don't want to be tapped by a car when you're in a crosswalk. These women, the descriptions of these cases, in the district attorney's own words, after he and his team have reviewed the case, they say this man was driving up and down the road almost like in stalkerish behavior, accelerated behind the women. So this is the very, very intentional. Women were left in the hospital. They brain bleeds. ICU stays. One had to be at least one had to be innovated. So I do have some concerns. I have concerns because this just this is such a traumatic situation for so many women. And had they made that arrest in August, when a sheriff said they had so much information, I wonder if other women would have been saved. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News.